Hi everyone and welcome to this course. In this course you will learn Flutter and Firebase where we will build a fully functional app that is ready for commercial use and deployment. This course will take you to an expert level. But of course, regarding the course requirements, it is required that you already know the basics of Flutter, otherwise it will be really hard for you to follow. So I suppose that at least you know what are the widgets in Flutter and how to use them. And as I mentioned, this course will take you to the expert level. And of course, I explained everything in details, but I strongly recommend you to have this knowledge first. So I'll be your mentor in this course. So please let me introduce myself. My name is Hadi, and I am a data scientist and Flutter developer expert. I have many courses here on Udemy, and I am a five stars rated instructor. So I'll leave this link um, to this page attached to this lecture so you can check it out if you want. And um, here are my courses. I have several courses. And um, upon finishing this one, I strongly recommend you to follow this one, the cross series course, and it has a web admin panel. So I strongly recommend you to watch it because there's a lot of things that is covered in this course that I didn't cover it in this course, okay? So there is a lot of things that is covered in the grocery course, but I didn't cover it in this course. Of course, our course here now will have other tricks that is not covered already in any other courses. Okay. I also have some other tutorials related to the REST APIs, like this one for beginners, this one for advanced level, and this one, if you want to build a chat GPT application, you can watch this one and it's freely available on YouTube. Perfect. So currently I'm working as a data scientist at a very popular and multinational company related to travel and uh, it is called Amadeus. And talking about my degrees, I have a master's degree in computer and communication engineering and another master's degree in data science and artificial intelligence. So that's it and let me welcome you again. So welcome to this course and I hope that you enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, please consider leaving a five-star review so that it achieve or it reach other students as well. Thank you, and let's head over to the next one. Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that in the Discord, there's a channel called Sale Coupons, so that my courses are always on sale. So at any time you want, each month, I share monthly coupons so you can get my courses for the best price okay so just that's it for this tutorial i will leave the invite link attached to this lecture make sure to check it hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial i will show you how our application looks like when we finish this course so this is when i have implemented at the end the orders so i consider that the course is done here and here's our application it looks like that so i'll show you all the features in our application so that you have better understanding of what we build okay so first of all here's the landing page the user will be able to log in if i press here of course we have the validation we have also error handling so for example if i try different email that it's not exist and the firebase we will have errors like that okay also if i enter an invalid email like that the email handling is a very good approach also we managed it in a very good way and and the code okay we have a screen to forget the password we have another screen for the sign up the user will be able to pick up an image using camera gallery and he can remove it then we have the titles, I mean the title, like that. The user is also able to log, in, uh, to log in with Google and as a guest. If he log in as a guest and try to add something to his wishlist or card, we will show him this dialog asking him to log in first. Here are the products, like that. And uh, the user, of course, will be able to navigate by category okay 
so we have it like that i added some other things uh, with different at categories these are random products of course then um, here we have this carousel with these pictures you can add as many pictures as you want if the user press here for example he will be able to see the product detail okay now let's continue actually here are the latest arrival so when the admin upload a new product um, the product will be shown to the left directly okay now let's continue here we have the search screen the user will be able to search for example if we search for test maybe here we don't have product so we show it like that if we have something maybe search for shoe search and now i have the results like that the user of course can be uh, can press here and we will show him like that here the cart page if it is empty it will be shown like that the profile page it will be shown like that and of course we have the dark mode also okay perfect now i will try to log in maybe with google to make it fast The user image will be shown here and my details will be shown here and when i log in like that uh, the user will be able to see his products his orders and his wish list also so in the wish list like that and the orders it is empty for now the user if uh, now he can add to his cart and to his wish list if he wants like that and of course when added it will be affected in the whole application here like, like that when I come back, now the user can change the quantity and then the user can remove if he wants and he can clear his cart if he wants. Now if I press on the checkout, go to the all orders, it will be shown here. Perfect. If I add something to the wish list, it will be shown like that. If I clear it, it will be cleared like that. For the cart and the wish list, we are saving it on the fire store same for the orders we are saving it on the fire store but for the viewed recently we're not saving it okay so when i see product it will be shown here like that of course we have the dark mode and it will be like that okay the user information is shown here like that of course there, is, there are premium features that i will create another course regarding it so stay tuned and um, we'll let you know when I publish the new course for the expert part where I will cover the rating for example. So we will have ratings in here, we will have segmented orders. So I will add a tutorial regarding it and the introduction also about the real application and I will put the source code online so you can get it also. Okay. so that's it for this tutorial and the next tutorial i will show you also the admin panel thank you and see you in the next one hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial i will show you how our admin panel looks like at the end of the course so this is what we have built during the course and i'm showing you the final output okay so uh, there will be a lot of similar things regarding uh, the user's application and the admin application the only difference that we have in here is this screen we are showing it like that and to display this as this grid view actually it is i showed a really really good approach so it is really beneficial then um, if the user wants to add a new product we have this screen we have this dialog similar to the one in the register screen the user can pick up a category and uh, he can clear the form and the upload the product now, if I upload the product directly, it will be added to the Firestore and it will be shown in the all products. We also use something called Stream Builder in order to show the um, the updates directly on the screen. So when the user up uploads a new product, it will be directly shown in the user's application. An important fact that I must mention is that when the user inspects all the products, if he wants to edit any product in here, he will be able to edit it like that. Okay. So he can change the image, change the category, and once he changed anything, it, the update will be directly applied. So if I name this one 
show edit product it has been edited if i go back now the title will be changed as you can see okay so uh, i must uh, show you this also and um, of course this is um, a light demonstration when i explain it to you there is a lot of things under the hood so make sure um, to watch it and understand everything so we handled a, lo a lot of things that that you should handle it in real application okay so uh, that's it for this tutorial thank you for attending and see you in the next one hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial i want to show you or demonstrate for you the main application that our course is based on so uh, so while I'm explaining you the UI and the course and everything in the course actually I was referring to this application of course the final output is very similar to this application and check it in the next tutorial but also I want to demonstrate for you this application this application is available uh, on sale I will make a separate tutorial regarding this uh, if you want it so you can get it and uh, get the license for it. So the UI is uh, almost the same as uh, the final output of our application. Maybe the padding, uh, there is slightly different things, but I showed you in the course how to change it and um, I explained everything in details. But this application, it has more features. It has features like uh, the ratings, ratings for the products it will uh, be shown like that so as you can see i can edit uh, my rating in here if i want so it has uh, a lot of uh, of different features and regarding these features because i consider them very advanced uh, i will make a separated tutorial regarding this but if you want this application now you can get it you can get it by sending me a message on my facebook page and I said I'll uh, make another tutorial regarding this, but uh, what I meant is that I will create another course that it will be based on this course just to cover the expert stuff such as uh, these kind of orders or the ratings and some other stuff. Okay, I will talk about it separately in another tutorial. So now let me demonstrate for you this application. So first of all, um, just as our application and here is the UI we have the latest arrival browsing by category the user will be able to, to, to browse by category for example if you want like that just show uh, how it belongs to the to the fonts category maybe my mistake so uh, here is the latest arrival the user can be able uh, to search we are showing the ratings in here we are uh, showing the ratings like that if the user didn't rate uh, the product it will be shown like that um it says here for example the user didn't purchase this item and the item is not rated at all yet okay so the, uh, since i purchased this item the rating will be uh, something like that see and if i add a rating it will be directly shown let's say um, hello for example submit and then as you can see i have it like that here if i want to edit my rating and here the ratings it will be shown like that and it will appear like that okay if i change this one put it to like that it will be one directly so uh, now the user of course will be able to add to his cart and it's uh, we are saving it on the firestore of course the user can delete and uh, clear his cart and we can change the quantity and to change the quantity we are saving it also on the firestore this is not covered in this course. I would only cover it in the expert course, how to change the quantity of the cart. Okay. Also regarding this, when the user press on the checkout, it will take him to this page. In our application, I didn't make it like that. Okay, I didn't cover the uh, address because I consider it advanced and uh, or expert level even. When I explain it later on in the expert course, you will see why I made it um, in a separated course. Okay, so um, in here, as you can see, we manage uh, the checkout, the payment uh, method, for example. I'm not sure if I will cover payment methods, but in here, the user can choose any other payment method, let's say. But regarding the address here, as you can see, the user can add a new address and he can see his addresses in here like that. If I add in a new address, 
this page will appear like that. And if I press here or on this button, it will be like that and the user can edit his others. Okay. In here, the profile page, it is the same as our application. And for the orders, as I showed you, we have it like that. Okay. Now let's come back and uh, everything else is the same as uh, the final output of our application. Here we have the login and uh, sign up page, which is also the same as what uh, I explained to you in this uh, tutorial. So as you can see, it has more features, this application, which is very, very advanced features. So this is why I will make a separate tutorial for it. And um, if you want this exact design, what you need to do is to send a message for this page. And um, we, as I said, we are selling the license for it. Okay, so just that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for attending. See you in the next one. Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I just wanted to show you the premium features that I will cover it in the expert course and it won't be included in this course. So um, the first thing, as I mentioned, we will have the ratings. Then we will have the segmented orders. Of course, now I shouldn't be able to see it. In our course, we aren't showing these, uh, the wishlist and order because the user is not signed in. And uh, if I log in, maybe choose sign in with Google and check the orders, the orders will be like that. And the admin will be able to, for example, um, change the status like, like here, it is completed. So this is, will be real time. If the admin change it, it will be directly changed in here. So as you can see, we have some of them in process and the user can cancel it. And if I cancel it, it will be directly canceled on the admin application. Okay, so uh, these are the two main features that will be covered in the course. And here I put, uh, I created this uh, GitHub repository. So uh, it is description about this course. I strongly recommend you to check it or watch the introduction. It will be okay. But in here, um, I put uh, this note. For example, if you watch all the introduction, you don't have to read it again, but just to stay with me in this tutorial. Okay. And... Um, it is worth mentioning that the courses are always on sale so that um, all my courses are always on sale so you can get it for the best price always, okay? So just try to join the Discord and you will get it for the best price. Then uh, uh, regarding the recording equipment, I'm using, uh, uh, I think this is the best mic in the world when I looked for it so that I hope that my voice is very clear so that uh, I deliver best content to you. And um, about this lecture, so what I will cover in the advanced course or expert course, it will be segmented orders and the rating system. These are the main things. Then we will update the uh, item quantity and the cart, as I mentioned in the last tutorial. Then we will have the address management, which is, it might look simple for you, but it's not simple at all. And then, uh, I will cover also for the Firebase sub collections and I might add other sections. It will depend actually on many other things. I might add something like uploading uh, categories. Uh, it depends. We will see what, what to do later on. Okay, so I prefer to mention and make everything clear for you so that you know uh, what I'm planning and uh, you know what to do after this course. Okay, and um, I'll do this uh, a separated tutorial regarding tips and tricks on how um, to get the best of this course and how to go through it. Okay, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to give you some tips and tricks that you can use it for any course on Udemy. So please do not skip this tutorial and stay with me because it will be really beneficial for you. So do not skip this tutorial and stay until the end. Okay. So when you search for a course, of course, you will see the title, but later on, you have to check the description so that you understand what this course is about and what there will be covered in this course. As you can see, it is, I wrote it in a very clear way so that you can really follow along and understand what this course uh, will cover. Okay. So here, for example, a light view on what you will learn, for example. So, um, of course, it will be more advanced in the course, but 
this is just the light view so that you have a general overview about what, what you need or what you need as prerequisites in order to follow or join this course so the next thing that you need to check if the, is uh, the sections and the titles of the lectures so when you check these titles you will have also a better understanding what will be covered in the course okay and if you don't want to check every lecture you can just check at least these sections for example right so for example in here i mentioned the state management using provider so here i might answer one of your question which is which state management are we using right we also you might also have other question like what is the back end and you will notice that the back end is firebase so these tips can be used on any other tutorial or course here on udemy now please allow me to continue as you can see we have here resources so what are these resources so for the introduction here you have for example this one if you press on it you will be able to view my udemy profile so this is a link however in here for example this is as you can see dot zip file this dot zip file it contains the lecture code so whatever i explain to you or i write the code for you you will have at the end the attached code to each lecture as you can see so here every time you will have the attached code as you can see okay so what you can do is to watch the tutorial with me do not just try to type along with me because i think this is a bad way so what you can do is first of all watch it one time at least try to understand what's going on if you want to type with me do it but at the end you will have the attached source code as you can see and you will also have the assets when you need it so if you want to add the images for example and so on okay so everything you need with the code you will find it available uh, in here for the resources also sometimes as i said i attach for you some uh, some links or urls and later on maybe links to some youtube uh, videos that might be helpful for you so please make sure to always check the resources because um, it is really helpful now i didn't make much uh, article lectures but later on through the course i might uh, make uh, some article lectures and please make sure to not skip these lectures because it is really important and um, yeah by the way this is an article lecture so you can check it here and you will know how to reach me for example this is really really important okay because i'm i'm saying this because in my previous courses a lot of students they just skip the article lectures which is really bad okay do not skip article lectures it's really important to make you understand better the course okay so everything in this course i gave it a lot of time to structure it and to design this course so please do not skip any lecture because it is very well structured and um, everything is connected together even if you are an expert please do not skip anything it would be really hard for you to follow okay we used a lot of tricks in each lecture do not skip any lecture please okay now let's continue here we have the q a section so if you have any question please do not hesitate if you're already a student so you know that i always help my students in a very decent time so maybe after a few hours i will answer your question and of course it depends on the kind of question okay so what you can do sometimes i'm really busy so it takes me few days in order to answer your question so in this case what you need to do is to go through the other asked questions so in this section here you will be able to view every question that has been asked regarding this course okay so some of your question might be already answered so please make sure to check also the asked questions and as you can see you can search in here for any other asked question okay so what i did in here i opened the grocery course Maybe some of you registered in it, and that's a really great course with an admin with a web admin panel actually. So in here, as you can see, there is a lot of asked questions, and all of these questions are answered. So if you have any question in mind, just try to type the keyword in here and search, and you will find the all answers in here. Okay. So this is a really useful trick. Please consider it, and also you can join the Discord. And I answer a lot of things also in Discord. And I make some announcement that is really helpful. So please make sure to join also the Discord. And um, 
I'll create a separate tutorial regarding this. Now let's come back here and um, you can add notes for each lecture. And sometimes I do some announcements regarding this course, for example, like uh, in here I did maybe one announcement. You can view it and it's really important uh, to check these and there is some comments. For example, you can comment over it. Okay, then uh, let's, uh, of course, if you like this course, please uh, try to review it. Um, maybe give, uh, if you like it, please consider giving it five stars reviews so that it reaches uh, other students. And with this, you will help me, of course. And if you have other feedback, please uh, consider sharing it with me so that I will improve this course and I will also improve my future courses. So now I have this kind of confidence because a lot of students gave me some good feedbacks previously and I have taken into consideration all of these reviews in order to deliver better contents for you. So please, if you have any review or any feedback in mind, please feel free to share it with me. And um, if everything is okay for you, please consider sharing five stars review. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so uh, that's it. And here, if you want to set a reminder, for for example, you can do it. And um, yeah, before that, I end this tutorial. Um, I will contact Udemy in order to unlock for all the tutorials the full HD. So uh, as you can see in here, uh, you can watch it with the highest resolution that I can give. Um, it is from Udemy. And unfortunately, um, the lectures cannot be downloaded. It's not about me. It is. Uh, from uh, Udemy, as you can see, it is uh, it is stopped, even if I, uh, I activate it, okay? Also, if you feel that I'm speaking low, you can change it from here. And then, uh, so you can change this voice over here. And if you feel that I'm speaking slowly, you, for example, you can change the playback in here, like that. So if I'm speaking slowly, you can make it faster. And if I'm uh, speaking fast, you can make it slower also. Okay, so I think this is, these are really useful information that you need to keep in mind because it's really, really important. Okay, and as you can see, it can be applied to any other courses on Udemy. So please keep it in mind and happy learning for you. So see you on the next tutorial. Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. And this tutorial, I just want to tell you how can you reach me? Okay, so first of all, you can connect with me using uh, LinkedIn. Feel free to connect uh, with me. Then uh, you can also send messages. Uh, if you have a question regarding the course, you can reach me on my Facebook page. Of course, you will have the links attached. Actually, this is a lecture, an article lecture, so you can check all, of, all the links here. Then after that, you will be able to you will have my github also so regarding my github i'm planning to upload uh, maybe every month a small uh, source code or uh, depends or maybe a big app so it would be really depending on uh, the performance on of the of the github okay so if you like feel free to follow me on my github so that you don't miss anything okay so as you can see we ha i have a lot of repositories and um, a lot of other courses so you can check it and um, it is well documented so you can understand which uh, all repositories what are what are they and uh, if it is helpful for you or not and finally regarding my youtube channel maybe after this course i will start focusing really well on my youtube channel so that uh, i strongly recommend you to follow or subscribe to my youtube channel because i'm planning to upload some other courses and uh, just upload it to my youtube channel okay so make sure to subscribe do not miss anything that's it and uh, thank you for attending see you on the next one so maybe you have this question what will you do after finishing this course and uh, will you be really able to develop your own application the answer is yes i covered a lot of things that makes you ready to work in a real company and uh, take freelance projects and i know many people that already did um, some freelance projects and join some companies just because of attending one of my courses okay so this is absolutely I'm um, I'm sure about and after finishing this course you will get a certificate do not hide this certificate because it's really important to show it 
So what you can do is to add it to your resume and you can also upload it to my LinkedIn. And if you want, you can um, tag me so that it reaches uh, more people. Okay. And if you have any other question, please feel free to ask me. I will try my best to help you. That's it. Thank you for attending and see you in the next one. Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I will just show you how to create a Flutter application and open it in Visual Studio Code. For that, of course, you need the Visual Studio Code uh, to be installed on your machine. And you need, uh, of course, to install Flutter first. I will not cover uh, the installation part in this uh, course since there is plenty of tutorials on YouTube. So you can check it and install Flutter in order to get started. And be careful about the requirements of this course. Make sure to read it all. Now to create a Flutter project, you just need to go to the location that you want it. In my case, I want it in this location. Now what you need to do is to press on the shift on your keyboard, then right click, and now you will get this option. So you press on open PowerShell window here. Then a new window will open. And now you just need to type Flutter, create, and the name of your project. Um, in our case, I will uh, name it, for example, shop smart underscore users. Okay, and because this course will be in English, I will add en at the end. And that's it. Now press enter. And as you can see, there is this file that has been uh, created here. Um, this is actually a folder and now you have access to this folder. What you need to do is just to drag it into your Visual Studio code and now it should work. Just like that. Of course, you trust the author since you are the author. So press on yes. And now here your application has been opened. Now, in order to change your IDE and choose, for example, a mobile phone or an emulator, let's say, here it is, you press on here, on Windows, for example, it might be something different in your case, and you choose here what you want. That's it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will set the theme for our application. So we will have dark and light theme. Before that we get started, I want you to understand a few things. So I'll go to our main application. And now here on this switch, I can change the theme. And as you noticed, the theme has been changed everywhere in our application. Not just in one screen, let's say. So we need to do the same in our application. And for that, we need to use a good state management. And in our case, we will cover the provider state management. In this tutorial, just to get started, I want to set up the theme and I will try to explain as much as I can about the provider state management. But don't worry if you don't understand it perfectly, there will be a huge section about it in the course. Okay, so what I recommend you to do is to watch this lecture. Do not skip it. Try to understand as much as you can. And then um, upon finishing the state management section, you can come back to this lecture and watch it again, and you will understand everything perfectly. Now, don't panic. The provided state management is something that is very easy, and I will explain everything in details. So this is the first thing that, that I wanted you to keep it in mind. The second thing is that uh, I want when the user uh, open uh, close and open up the application again to fetch the last saved theme so that if the user choose the dark theme for example when he close the application and open it uh, again we want to show the dark theme again okay so in order to do this we need to save the user settings into his local phone and in order to do this we can use a package called shared preference so I'll come back to our application. And before that, I install the required packages, which are the shared preference and uh, the provider state management. I will show you something. So
So what I'm going to do is to remove this. And I'll create a new folder and let's name it screen or screens like that. And then create a new folder, a new file inside of the screen and let's name it home screen like that. And now let's create a stateless widget like that. And let's name it here home screen. Okay. Here we need to return a scaffold and now as a body, I will use a column and for this column, let's give it children. And now I got an error here. It's because we cannot use const if we use column here. Okay. So now the const should be here. All right. So now I will add the text and let's say hello world. And then let's do some styling for this text by adding the style argument and then say text style like that. And let's choose the font size and set it to 50. And you can set the font weight, for example, and put it to bold. Okay. Now I will add one more button. Let's add, for example, elevated button. And here, here we can give it, for example, uh, any text. Let's say hello world. And then in here, I got an error. It's because of the const here. So now the elevated, uh, so now the elevated button is not const. While this text will not be rebuilt again. So it can be const. Okay. So this button, when because it has this function and it might be rebuilded. So something might be different. It cannot be const again. And uh, later on in the course, it will become clearer for you. For now, just I want to show you a small example. Now I want to set it in the middle. So I'll ask, uh, I'll put uh, the main axis uh, alignment and the cross axis alignment to the center like that. And now this home screen, it can be used in the main file instead of this one like that and of course we need to import it and now restart the application and let's see here it is now I have it like that and if you want it uh, in the center you, we can wrap this column directly by center or we can set the main axis size so I'll just wrap it by center and remove the cross axis alignment like that. So now what I wanted to show you is that if I come back to the main.dart file and now we can add, for example, something like scaffold background color. And this color, I will put it to red, for example, and now the background color will be changed. And now, and this is not only for this screen, if you add any other screen, the scaffold background color will be red by default. If I go to the home screen and now we can add the scaffold background color here also and I can choose for example colors dot green and it will be different. Okay, so now what you understand is that we need to manage the colors that we want it to be in all screens in our application we can um, use for example or we can set our colors in one file. Now I will change this one to white. And let's try, for example, this one, change it to green and hit save. And now um, that we can remove this background color from here and save it also. And now if you see here, this button got changed to green. So this primary swatch, it affects the elevated button. So I would just wanted to make sure that you got the idea about the colors. Now we can go to the browser. And then you need to go to the pub to dev and then you have the shared preference here. So let's open it and you can search for the provider state management. So here it is. Now I strongly recommend you when you want to install any package, you need to read the uh, readme for it. Okay. So make sure to read it. 
same for the shared preference always read the readme okay so you have some examples and you might have some requirements for android and mac os in order to, to to install these packages and work without any error so now i'll copy this one and in order to install it you need to go back to the pubspec to tml file and uh, you need to paste it here below the cupertino icons and of course the indentation matters so be careful now i'll also install this one so i'll copy this one and of course you can add this this line of code in your terminal but for me i prefer to just copy it and then go to the pop spec to tml file and just paste it here okay now when you save it you need to press uh, Control s to save it or you can press on this icon here or you can open up the terminal and in here you need to type um, flutter packages get okay now and the output in here it says that all good and uh, what I recommend you to do is when you install a package you need to stop the process and run the application again okay so now let's continue our work for that I will create a new folder and I will name it constants like that and then I will uh, add a new file at uh, and we can name it for example app colors dot dart and in here let's create a new class and let's name it app colors like this and to add uh, color we can add static and later on i'll show you why i use static and it is a const and we need to define the color so it's of type uh, color and then let's uh, choose the light scaffold uh, color for the light theme and in our case i will use the colors dot uh, white like that and of course i'm getting an error here because we need to import the material package okay so i'll add now the other colors that we will be using it in our application just like that okay now why i added static here I'll show you the example so I'll copy this come to the home screen and now for the scaffold background color let's add a background color and let's call our class so up color and now you have access to the uh, to what you want for example so in our case we need to use the light scaffold color now to make it clear for you I'll go to this class and now remove the static keyword and now I get an error you cannot access this glad scaffold color by calling the class name if you, you, didn't, you don't make it static okay so now we finished the app color now we can move to the interesting part we need to create the provider class in order to set up our state management so for that, let's create a new folder. Let's name it provider or providers. And inside here, we can create a new file and we can name it theme. So I created this file and now we can, in here we can create a new class and I will name it theme provider. And now we need to use a mixin which is named change notifier and this change notifier will allow us to to listen to the changes and it will be clearer soon enough in here what i will do is to define a boolean and let's say dark theme and by default i'll put it to false then what we can do is to create a getter for the for it so let's say get is dark theme and in here we need to just return it then we need to create a method to set the theme and another method to get the theme to achieve this let's create a function called set dark and of course it takes a boolean value that we will pass it later on from the ui 
And in here, we need to define the shared preference because we need to save it to the shared preference. I mean, we need to save this Boolean value to the shared preference. And now we need to initialize it. To initialize it, we need to call the get instance like that. Now I'm having an error because it is a future. And about the future, later on, with the Firebase part, it will become very clear. But for now, what I want you to understand is that uh, it will be an action that it will take time, for example. And this line of code, if we add a sync and then we add a wait, this line of code will be waited. Okay. So the other codes will not be executed if this line is not finished yet. Now, what we can do is to call this prefs that we just initialized and we can call something uh, called set bool. Now we have something called set boolean, set double, set int. So you can use any method that you want. In our case, we will use the set boolean. It takes a key and it takes a value. So the value is our boolean value. It's coming from here. And the key we need to, um, you can add it directly like that. But in my case, I will just keep it very well organized. So what I'm going to do is to define a const and uh, let's name it team status like that the key it can be just like that okay and um, i'll make it static so we can access it anywhere if we call this class now instead of this key we can use the theme status that we just initialized now what i want to do else is that we need to set this dark theme also into the new value okay so why I'm doing this, so later on, if I'm getting this value to check if we have the dark or light theme, for example, it would be updated by using this function, okay? And now, in order to let our application know that there is a change, we need to call a function called notify the center. So this is, whenever there is a change, it will listen to it and it will notify the application that there is a change. And this is why the provider is very useful. So you can listen to the changes and the change the UI depending on that. Now we need to create another function. So this function, it would be to get the theme. And of course the theme, we need to fetch it from the shared preference. So it is a future method. And usually to write future method, you can write it like that. But for me, I prefer to make it clearer even in companies, we use it like that just to make it clearer for the reader if the someone else needs to work on the code. So now I created this function and in here we need to initialize the shared preference. And then we need to use the preference in order to get now. So we can say get boolean and we can give it the key. And in our case, the key is the key that we initialized uh, here. So we can just fetch it from the user uh, phone memory. Now, what we need to do is actually, once we fetch the theme, for example, imagine the user closed the application and he wants to open it again. When he opened the application again, we need to call this method in order to fetch the last added theme. And what we can do actually is to save this Boolean value again and our dark theme but now i get an error because this value might be null so we can add uh, false so what this means is that if this value is null we can directly set it to false and as usual we need to call the notify listener and at the end we can return um the dark theme it's not really required but if you want it we can return it and in order to return it we need to change this type and now i got an error to this function because we need to add uh, the return statement and in our case we can return the dark theme now one more thing which is the most important thing maybe is that we need to call this method directly when the application starts so i want you to keep this in mind we will come to this file later and add one line of code and 
the application will work perfectly. But for now, let's move on and go to the main .dart file. And in here, I will just remove these comments. And then I will change the app name to shop smart. And now we need to wrap this material with a new widget for the provider in order to allow the provider to keep listening to the change. So an important fact about the provider that if you want to listen to a change in a certain screen, you need to be in the upper tree of that uh, of that screen. So if I want to say it in another word, here you have the home screen, for example, and I want to listen to the home screen changes. But if I want to listen just to the changes in the home screen, I can add the provider listener upper of this screen only. But for the theme state management, we need to listen and we will affect the whole application. And in order to do this, we need our provider to be the parent of the material app. So in order to do this, we need to add the multi-provider. And again, if you don't understand this perfectly now, as I said, watch the state management section and then come back to this. In here, it takes uh, an argument called the providers and we need to call it, to give it something called change notifier provider and then you have this create and what you need to do is to return your provider in our case we name it theme provider and that's it now i'll go to the home screen and what i want to do is to create a switch that it will enable us to change the provider or change the theme let's say so below of this elevated button Let's add a switch list style. And now, as you can see, it takes a value and it takes the unchanged function. So the value, we need to give it the provider value. So actually we need to give it this dark theme value initially. So in order to do this, we need to access the provider and to access the provider, we need to initialize it here because it takes the context. So let's say theme provider, and it is equal to provider dot off. And of course, let's import the package. Like that. And now we need to specify the type, which is in our case, theme, theme provider. And then here, here we need to give it the context. That's it. Now we can use this theme provider. Here we can get the S dark theme. And for the unchanged function, we can call the set function that we are that we defined in the theme provider. So here's this function. We can call the theme provider dot set dark theme and we can give it the value. And if I hover here now, this function, it takes a Boolean. So in here, we need to define a value. For example, you can name it whatever you want, and that's it. Now to start the application, let's see if there's something different. So you have it here. Let's see change. Okay, there is no changes on the screen. So what I wanna do here is that I will print or we can use log in order to show it clear for you. So let's say the theme state is the theme provider dot get is dark theme like that. And before that I finish, what I wanna do is to add a title widget, a title argument, and we can um, add uh, a text here. And what we can do is a small check about the theme state. So let's say theme provider dot, if it is dark, we can show, for example, dark mode text, but if not, we can say light mode, like that. Now save it. And if I change this, now it's showing here dark mode. 
So I'll remove this line of code now. And now the next step is that actually I want to change the screen. I mean, change the screen color depending on the theme. So in order to do this, we need to create a new file to manage this. So in the main file here, we have something called theme data that is affecting the application colors. So I'll just remove this. And now let's create a new file here. And we can name it, for example, theme underscore data dot dirt. And in here we can create a class. We can name it styles, for example, like this. And uh, in here we need to define the theme data. Because if you remember here, the theme is of type theme data. So here we can define static theme data. I will name it theme data like that. And it will take few arguments, which are the, um, the theme, if it is dark or light. So let's say uh, Boolean is dark theme like that. And we need also the context. So we can pass it. Of course, I'm getting an error because we need to return something. So in here, we need to return the theme data. And now in here, we can start setting, for example, the scaffold background color. We can check if it is dark. So we show the dark color. So we define the app color as class. And in here, we can call the dark scaffold color. But if it is light, we can call the light color. So app colors dot light scaffold color. All right, perfect. So I will add everything. Okay, so I added also the card color and um, I'll just keep it uh, like this for now. Of course, later on, we will add a few other things. For example, you can also manipulate the upper color, the, uh, the buttons color, text fields, and so on. And you will see it later on in our application, but I don't wanna implement it now. Later on, when we build an upper, for example, and we want to change the theme for it, we can directly come here and I'll show it to you. So now, in our case, we can use this theme data in our main. And of course, I use the static here, so we can call the styles and call, call the theme data to it. We need to import it, of course. And now we call the theme data. We need to give it the as dark theme. In our case, we need to do something now to listen to the changes. So let's say here first false, and let's see if it will work. Save. Uh, of course, we need to restart it. We changed to many files. And now, as you can see, the colors changed. Okay. Now, if I put this to true. It didn't change. It's because uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's because of this one. We need to remove the scaffold uh, color from here. So I'll just remove, uh, start the application again. And yeah, you directly can see the difference. Now, if I put it to false, save, here it is. Now we want this color to be dynamic. And what can we do about this is that uh, there is a widget called consumer. So this consumer also, it is a provider, but we use it just to wrap only one widget that it needs to listen to the changes. So in here, I don't have access to the provider class. Of course, I can initialize it here, just like the way we did in here, for example, and use it because we need to use this, this one, the get as dark theme. But another way to do this is to wrap the, um, the material widget, for example, by a widget called consumer. So let's do it here. Let's wrap it by a builder. And uh, in here, it is a consumer widget. And the type, it will be theme provider. And then it takes three different arguments, the context, you can name it this one as what you want, which is the theme provider in our case. Like this. And finally, the child that it want to change. 
So I know that this consumer takes three different argument because when I hover on it, I have this build context, the theme provider, which is the value that I assign to it, and an allable widget. This interrogation mark, it means that with this widget, it can be null. And later on, if you don't know too much about the uh, null safety, for example, don't worry, it will become clear in the future lectures. So now we can, we have access to this theme provider. And now we can get the get is dark theme. Restart the application. Now press here. Now, as you can see, it is working. And this is actually working in the whole application. Okay, of course, this text Later on, we need to change it, but for now, this is working. Now, if I restart the application, because I told you we need to fetch the last saved theme, so let's see if it will work. As you see, it didn't work. If you remember, in the theme provider, we defined a method in order to get theme, and I told you we need to use this method when the user open up the application. What can we do is, I mentioned that, that we need, we will add only one line of code here. So we can call the theme provider and in here, call this function, the get theme function, that's it. Restart the application, change the theme, restart the application again, and it should work. Okay. And as you can see, it worked. So that's it in this tutorial. I hope that uh, you understood everything. In the next tutorial, we will also do some enhancement. And uh, But before that, I strongly recommend you to manipulate the code by yourself. It is really an easy code. And uh, maybe I can just show you again what we did. So let's go step by step. Here we have the main file. We have here the theme that you can manipulate it. In our case, we defined a class called styles. Let's go see this styles class. So in this styles class, we define the theme data. And this theme data, it takes two different arguments, which are the is dark theme and the context. And here you have uh, the colors that you want it to be uh, different. And you want to change it when the user change the theme. In here, we define the class to define our our colors and then in here we define the theme class uh, I mean the theme provider class so we define this key which uh, we need to use it for the shared preference we define this uh, is dark this boolean that it is uh, to check if the color is dark the theme is dark or light for example we created a getter for it and uh, finally, we created two different functions. The first function is to set the theme. So in here, we need to initialize the shared preference, save the theme to the shared preference, and set this as dark theme to the value so that when we get it, we will have the access to the new value to it. And of course, we need to call the notify listener to make sure that uh, the provider listened to the changes. Because if I remove this notify listener, you won't see any difference. When I change the theme from dark to light, for example, there will be no difference. And in this case, we need this function in order when the user to open up the application, um, we need to define the shared preference again, initialize it, I mean, and then we need to set this as dark theme to the last saved via a value and the Boolean. So. In here, we did a small check if it is null. Of course, it might be null because if the user just installed the application, this value will be null. So by default, we, as you saw, we make it as uh, as light by default. If I put it false, uh, if I put it to true, it will be dark by default. Of course, we need to listen to the changes. So this is why I added this notify listener in here. And finally, I return this dark theme. It's not necessary, but I just show it to you. And the home screen, we define the provider here. We need to provide it uh, to define it like that. And actually, there is other argument for this one. It's called listen. And this we'll talk about it later in the state management section. So if I add this uh, listen, it is actually a Boolean value. So it is a Boolean value. 
and it, uh, it can take true or false. If it is true, we will listen to the changes, which is the default value. But if we put it to the false, this notify listener that you saw it in the provider class, it won't affect it because it won't listen to any changes. And the state management section, it will become clear for you. If you don't understand it very well now, no problem, don't worry. And now in here we created this uh, switch list. We give it the text depending on the theme status. We give it the value, which is the value that the getter that we define it like that. And finally, we call here the set dark theme method in order to give it the new value. Okay, and maybe if to make it clear for you, this uh, let's say theme value and what we can do is wrap it by brackets and now i got an error and we can here add the required keyword and uh, let's change this value like that and then in the home screen i got an error because we need to pass it now uh, just like that okay maybe this is clear for you all right so what's left is that in the main screen whenever we add a provider and we need to listen to it we need to add it in here. So we wrap the material up with this multi provider. And in here, we need to add all our providers. So later on, we will have, for example, a provider for the card, wish list, products. We will add it in here. And of course, as I said, uh, as I said it multiple times, in the state management section, it will become clearer. And about this consumer, because we need to listen to the changes about the theme. This is why I wrapped this material widget by this consumer widget. Of course, we could initialize it just like we did in here. So we can initialize it like that. But I wanted to show you an alternative. So we can just do it like that. Okay. So uh, before that, I end this tutorial. Let's just also add one more argument uh, to the theme data, which is the brightness. And this is helpful uh, to show the text uh, you will see what I mean. So we can do a check on the as dark theme. And we if it is dark, we can use dark brightness. But if it is light, we can use light brightness. Now, if I save this file, we can see the text as you can see. OK, in the future lectures, there might be some tutorials where we will come to this file also and add more to the theme data to suit our needs. And uh, I'll explain it later in details. So this was all for this tutorial. I hope that it is uh, very clear for you. And, uh, if, uh, and if you didn't understand it 100%, as I said it multiple times, after finishing the state management section, come back to this code, um, read it by yourself or watch the tutorial again, you will understand it perfectly. It is an easy code but uh, you just need to follow with me step by step and uh, understand about the state management. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, everyone. In this tutorial, I'll show you how can we make a custom widget, which is will make our life easier later on in the course. And it will reduce our code a lot. You'll see later on. And in this course, I'll just give you an example about uh, the text. So for example, here we define this text, which is the hello word text, which is appearing here. And then we gave it a font size and font weight. For this one, we can give it, uh, for example, for this text, text style, we can give it other arguments such as, for example, the decoration for the text. So we can give it text decoration. And we can choose, for example, underline. If I hit save, now the text is underlined. We can give it the color. If I give it, for example, red color, now the text is red. We can give it other arguments, such as, for example, uh, the background color, other other things. Let's give it the font size uh, style. And for the font style, you can make it as italic, for example. And if I save it now, now it is italic. I will format my code, and if you noticed, uh, every time I add this comma here, even if I am at the end, because 
it helps us uh, to format our code. So if I remove it from here and if I remove it from here and format my code, now my code is not readable as before. So always make sure to add the comma at the end to make it more uh, beautiful. And if you are worrying about these uh, problems here, later on, I'll give you a comment in order to remove all of these things. Okay, I'll give it to you and uh, maybe in the last section of this course. So let's continue now our work and we can do a custom widget for this text, for example. But before that, we start making it. I'll just copy it and paste it multiple times and then I will save it. And now we have many other texts. But now look how much space it took and it's not very comfortable to work like that. So what I'm going to do is just to remove this text from here and save it. And for me here, I'll add to do a text. Now, what I'll do is to create a new folder and I will name it widgets. And inside of this folder, I'll make a new file and I will name it uh, subtitle. Uh, let's say subtitle underscore text dot dart. And now in here, we can define a stateless widget. We can name it text or let's say subtitle text widget. In here, we need to return our text just like that. We need to import the material package. And here we need to change it to semicomma and that's it. Now we need to use this subtitle text widget. So we can use it here like that and we can import it like that. We need to add the comma here. And now what can we do is to pass the arguments to here. So to do that, I'll define a final. The first one I'll define a um, string called label, for example. We need to add it to the named constructor. And by named constructor, I mean, for example, here it is between brackets. But if I remove this bracket, it won't be named anymore and we don't have to add the required argument here. Later on in the course, I will add a lot of codes and then I'll show it to you more and more and you will understand better and better. Let's continue now and this label, we can use it here. Now this text is not const constant anymore. So we can remove the const. And of course I got an error here because we need to give it the named argument, which is the label. I'll say, for example, hello and save it. We, ca we cannot save it because we didn't save the subtitle text. So now we need to start it and that's it. It is appearing in here now. Now what I'm going to do is to go to the subtitle and then I'll remove this required keyword. And what I'm going to do is to put it equal to hello. Uh, let's say it is me again. Now save it. No changes at all. But if I go here now, I am able to remove this label not necessary to add it. Okay, I didn't get any error. And if I save it, it will take the default value that I gave it to it here. Perfect. So now let's add the other arguments, which are the font size, font weight, and the other things. If I hover on the font weight, for example, it is a nullable value of type font weight. For the decoration, it is of type text decoration, and it is nullable also. So for that, we can define it here. So let's say final double uh, font size, let's say. And this font size, we can use it we need to add it here first. And now we can use it here and it is double. So we can directly use it here and that's it. And then of course I got an error here because we need to add the font size. Okay, we need to restart it because I didn't save the other file. And now that's it. It's being changed. Let's continue now and we need to define the other arguments. So for that, I'll just add it for you. So I'll just copy and paste it here. And then let's add it here. And for the label, I want it required. We don't need to add default for it. So let's add the required keyword here. 
but for the other for example for the font size we can give it a default value of 18 for example we don't have to pass it every time so for the font style we can give it font style of font style uh, normal like that we need to remove this required keyword from here to avoid the error and for the weight we can give it also font weight um, of type normal for the color uh, we can make it nullable so this is why i make it nullable because it's not necessary and uh, finally the text decoration we don't have to put it uh, as required also so we can put it as text decoration and i'll give it none okay so now we can use these values here so here we can use the font style that i defined above here we can use the color and because it's nullable, for example, if I use null, I won't get any error. Okay. So let's give it the color here. And then for the decoration, let's give it the text decoration. And in here, we can give it the font weight. And that's it. Here I got an error because there is a required argument here, as you can see, which is the label. So what I'm going to do is to remove this one from here. And let's say hello word like that and I still have an error because I didn't add the label so we need to add the label first so label here just like that and the error is gone and now let's add the const keyword here okay and to format it more we can add the comma here and that's it let's start the application and here it is now we have this text just like that now, for example, if you want to use this text multiple times, you can use it like that. And the code is way more less than before. So with this way, we make our life easier and the code is way more reduced. And you will see later on in the course when we use it uh, more, it will be really beneficial for us. So what I'm going to do now is to create another file for the title. Of course, you can make it directly for the subtitle also. Um, we can add a boolean value to specify if it is a title or not, but I'll just separate the files uh, to make it clear for you. So let's say in here title underscore text dot dart. Then we can get uh, the code from here. Basically, it will be the same code, but I will just add the code that I have. So I added this code. It is basically the same as the other code, but I put the font size equal to 20. And I put here this max line. So the max line, we can use it here. And I put another thing, it's called the overflow, and I'll show it to you. So let's use this widget. Let's go to the home screen, and now let's use our widget, import it, and let's give it the label. And let's say, hello, this is a title. Now save it. So here it is, hello, this is a title. Now if I put, for example, timestamp and hit save, as you can see, we have these three dots here. So we want it to fit only on one line because I added the max line here. And uh, we added this text overflow here. So the maximum would be one line and we will have these ellipses here. And if I change this max line, for example, put it to four and hit save. Now we have four lines. Okay, so this is will be helpful for us later on. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for this tutorial. If you have any question, please feel free to drop it. I'll try my best to help you. And I'll see you in the next one where we will start building the bottom navigation bar. I'll see you in the next one. In this tutorial, let's start implementing our bottom bar. So for that, I want you to understand something first. So this bottom bar is quite specific because we need to keep the state active. So if I go, uh, for example, I scrolled a bit. And now if I go to the home screen, uh, to the profile screen and then scroll also, and I go to the home screen, it is the same here screen. Okay. What I mean is that even when I scroll down, it's still down. It didn't rebuild again for the profile also it is the same it's it didn't 
return to the previous main state. For example, if I go to the search screen and I scroll down and I go to the home and then go back to the search screen, now it uh, brings us again to the first product. Okay, so I wanted to show you the difference because this is very important and very important in practice. So let's get started. I'll show it to you and the codes. So to build our bottom navigation bar, let's create a new file here. Let's name it root screen. You can name it whatever you want. And in here, let's create a stateful widget because we need to change some values in this screen. So in here, I'll name it root screen. And let's add scaffold. Of course, we need a scaffold because it is a screen. And then in here, let's give it uh, the body. And for the body, we will use something called the page view. And the page view is really required because we need to keep the state active as I showed you. Otherwise, it won't work like that. Okay, I showed you in my other tutorials, even some tutorials are on, on, on YouTube. You can view it. There is many type of bottom bars that I covered and it's always a different code and very optimized codes, uh, which is render fast and very fast for your application. So you can check it out. So yeah, I strongly recommend you to check it out. So you have diversity of uh, bottom bars and you can choose between these bottom bars and you can convert it to this code also with different UI. So now for this page view, let's remove this const to get rid of the error. We need to give it uh, the children and we need to give it uh, a controller, but let's start with the children. So the children, it will be the screens that we need to show it on the, the, the screen. I mean, when we choose a page, if you remember in here, for example, I choose the search, it show me the search. If I choose the home, it will show me the home. So basically in this uh, children list, we will show our screens. So let's create the other screens that we need. So we need the search screen, for example. And for that, uh, I'll create a stateless widget for now. Let's name it search screen. Let's add a scaffold. And in here, uh, let's add a body and then a center. And let's give it a text as is, uh, or we can use a title text widget. And in here, let's give it the label. So as a label, let's say search screen. Okay, now I'll copy this code and then I'll create a new screen. Let's name it profile screen dot dart. Let's paste our code and let's uh, change this keyword to profile. And then let's add the card screen also. And let's paste our code and let's change this value to cart. Now in our list and the root screen, we can add the screens. So we have the home screen. We have the search screen. Then the cart screen and the profile Format our code and now we have it like that. Now what we can do is basically to add this list, define it here up. So let's say list for example and name it screens and paste our code here. And let's initialize the end state. End state uh, this is a method that it will be called when Whenever you navigate to this screen, this method, it will be called first. So what can we do is to cut this line of code. And then here, let's say screens equal to this code. And that's it. And now in here, let's do it like that. Now it says here we got an error. We need to add the late keyword. So the late keyword is actually, it means that this value here, it will be initialized later on. And the best place to initialize it is the end state. Or you can make it nullable, but in our case, we don't want it nullable. We want to initialize it, otherwise we will get an error. So now the error is gone. 
then we will need other value which is the uh, current screen and we can define it uh, like that and later on it will become clearer why we need this value now another value that we will use is the controller so if i hover here it is of type page controller so what we can do is to define it also here like that and what uh, we can do is to add late here also and initialize it here so let's say controller equal to page controller and then in here we can give it initial value which is will show the initial page you can put it directly to zero or to make it dynamic we can use current screen and this and then after that this value we will use it for other things and you will see why perfect so now this controller we can use it here just like that and the screens list we can use it here i got an error here if i hover on it it is list of type widgets here but our defined list is of type dynamic so what we need to do is we can copy this one and we need to define the type of this one of this list like that now the error is gone i'll go back to our uh, to the main application here is these icons you cannot find it directly so we need a package for that the package is actually it called the flutter iconly so i already navigate to here and I'll uh, copy this one and we need to add it in our code so for that I'll add it in the pubspec.yaml file just here then save your file cut the process and run your application again to make sure that it is being installed correctly okay let's go back to the root screen and in here for the scaffold you have an argument which is called the bottom navigation bar for this bottom navigation bar we will use something called navigation bar and my other tutorials i showed you totally something different so i never used the navigation bar, bar in my tutorials so this is a good practice and i strongly recommend you to check the other tutorials or other courses maybe so this navigation bar it takes some required arguments which, uh, which is actually one argument, which is the destination, but we need to give it other arguments, such as the method that we will change the index or the chosen page. So for that, it's called on destination selected. If I hover on it, it takes an int, which is, as you can see it in here, we can name this one as what we want. For example, I'll name it index. And then what we can do is to call the set state to rebuild our widget and put the current screen equal to this index. And to jump to the other page, what we can do is to call our controller, which is the controller for the page view. And then we can call a method called it jump to page. And then we can give it the current screen to jump to it. Now for the destination, we need to use something called navigation destination. And this one takes two required arguments, which are the icon and the label. For the icon, I'll use the iconly, which is the package that we installed. And in this case, the first one, it will be the home. And of course, we need to define an icon widget and then give it the value icon data. Okay. So uh, in here, let's add the home. Now I have it like that. What, what I'm going to do is to add the const here. And also this one, it has an argument, which is the selected icon. So if we select a page, for example, I want to show it filled. So to do that, we can use uh, the iconly bold, but in our case, let's use the home. So now we have the iconly light and iconly bold. What I'm gonna do is to copy this, paste it once for the search. This one would be for the cart, and this one would be for the home, uh, for the profile. So in here, let's say search. then for this one i'll use bag too so i name it cards here and then we have here the profile so we can use the profile icon and let's name it here profile oops just like that 
Now let's restart the application and let's see what will happen. Okay, so nothing happened. Of course, nothing happened because we need to add the, the root screen in this file. So let's add the root screen here, save it. And now we have our code. I mean, it is being shown here. So now when I press here on the search icon, it took me to the search screen, but uh, it, did, it doesn't show that the search screen is being selected. We will fix this very soon. If I press on the cart, it took me to the cart. Now, if I try to swipe, also I can swipe, but I don't want to allow it in my screen. So in my application, I mean. So in order to fix this, we need to go to the root screen and then for the page view widget, we can add uh, physics. And this physics, it's called never scroll physics, just like that. And now if I save it, I won't be able to scroll anymore. Now let's fix the error. Uh, it's not an error, but let's fix this when I press on the search, for example. I want to show that the search is being selected. To do this, for the navigation bar, there is other arguments. So we have the selected index, for example. We can put it to the current screen. Now save. And this is why I told you we will use it too much, this current screen. It's very important to understand where and on which page we are. So. Now, as you can see, it will show the screen that's being selected. Also, other arguments you can give it uh, as, uh, for example, the background color. We can use this theme. For example, we can use the scaffold color. And in order to call the scaffold color, we need to call the theme dot of context. And then we give it the scaffold background color, just like that. If I save it, now the color changed to the scaffold background color. We can give it other arguments such as the elevation. You can put it to 10, for example, and you can play with this value. It will be different for you. So you can change with this value to suit your needs. And finally, if you feel this height is big, for example, you can put uh, a height for it. So, but I want to change the height. We can use, for example, 80. And just to keep it clear for you, I remove this one. And if I use 180, for example, as you can see, the height is different now. But for me, I like to make it smaller. So you can use, for example, 20, but it's hard to, to maintain it because it, your application might run on different devices, uh, Android devices, since this application is mostly built for um, mobiles not tablet or a web, it will be only responsive on mobiles and in this uh, portrait mode. So uh, in our case, what I will do is to choose the K bottom navigation bar height. Okay, so this is will be uh, with this uh, of this width. You can also use something called K up bar. There's another thing called K tool bar height also. It's almost same width. But for me, I'll just keep it the K bottom navigation bar height and keep it just like that so uh, i think this is all for this tutorial uh, anyways if you get annoyed because of this uh, as i said uh, i'll give you a, a comment later on at the end of this course in order to remove this uh, this you don't have to remove it manually and it's shown and the problem so i can just give you a comment to remove all of this okay so uh, that's it for this tutorial I'll see you on the next tutorial where we will start implementing the screens. I hope that you all enjoyed this tutorial. See you on the next one. In this tutorial, we will implement the profile screen. So this is screen. So as you can see, we have this up bar over here. We have this text, which is, uh, as you can see, this moving background and red color. Then we will have this text if the user is not logged in. And then we have these widgets. And we have this widget, uh, which is the switch style that allow us to switch between the theme. And then uh, this one, we don't have to add it. And this button over here to log in or log out. So now uh, I'll try to log in and show you the other widget. So uh, I'll just log in with my uh, Gmail. Okay, and now I'm logged in. And here, now it is showing this widget. It's not showing that text. Uh, okay, so let's get started. 
So for that, I'll just go back to the profile. And for that, let's go to the profile screen here. And for the scaffold, we can add the app bar here. So let's add an app bar. And uh, we need to remove the constant from here and save it now. And an app bar is being added here, but it's not clear for you, clear for you. So I'll just uh, do the light mode. And in here we have this app bar. I just noticed this color and the light uh, mode. So let's go to the root screen. And in here, let's add the background color again. And uh, now it look better. Okay, so now we have this up bar here. We can add a uh, text, for example, title. And for the title, we can add uh, a text. And let's say, for example, hello or profile screen, whatever you wanna name it. And as you can see, it appeared in here. Okay, now we have the image here. So we need to add the image. In order to add the image, this is an image that's found in the asset of our application. So we need to add the assets to our application. In order to do this, you need to add a new folder here. And then this folder, to add it, you press here, for example, outside, or you can create it in the direction, directory, I mean, um, directly from Windows, or you can just, uh, as I did here, and add uh, this button, press here, and you create this file, the assets file. But in my case, I will just drag and drop it here from my previous, uh, from the main project, and uh, we need to do some other steps. Okay, so I added this assets folder here. I added the images folder also inside of the assets folder. And then here we have the folders and files that we needed. So uh, in order to be able to use it in our application, we need to do some extra steps. We need to add uh, the images path into the popspec.yaml file. Same for the bug uh, path, for example, the banners path. So all the folders, you need to add uh, the path to the popspec.yaml file, and you can add the path for each image, for example, but no need to do this. You can just add the path to each folder, okay? And to view the images, you can press on it, and you will have the images directly, okay? So you can see it directly. So now let's go to the popspec.yaml file, and in order to get a path, for example, you can right-click and then press on copy relative path, then go to the popspec.yaml file. You can search for the assets, which is here, uncomment this, remove this line, and now paste, paste what you have. Before pasting what you have, as you can see here, we have this forward slash. So when you paste your file, your path, I mean, you need to be careful about this slash. It is a forward slash and you need to add the forward slash at the end also. We need to add the path for the other folders. So for that, I will add it. So I add it here. Whenever you add a new asset to your application and you want to use it, cut the process and run your application again to make sure that it is working correctly. Okay, so now I'm running the application again. And as you can see, um, it is uh, this Flutter pop get is being running. Let's continue now. So we need to use the image and our uh, profile screen and the app bar. So to do that, we need to add the leading and in here we can add image dot asset and in here you need to give it the path to give to get the path we need to get uh, for example in my case i will use this icon or this image you can copy the relative path then go to the profile screen and paste it here and be careful about the backward slash for move it uh, change it to forward slash just like that okay now the application is being installed. So let's, let's see what will happen. Okay, at the meantime, let's go, uh, let's go actually to the root screen. And what we can do here to make our profile screen as default screen, we can change this index to three because we have a zero as home, one as search, two as card, 
and finally the three as profile so now when i restart the application the profile screen will be the main screen okay now the image didn't appear in here of course because we need to restart it and now as you can see here we have our image and what you can do for example you can add uh, you can wrap it by padding this image so feel free to wrap it by padding if you want just uh, like as what you want and uh, i don't know if you noticed we have a lot of images so if i want to use the images just like that every time copy the relative path it's not very efficient so we need to optimize the code as much as we can and to deliver very high content and very high quality code in order to do this we can create for example a new folder let's name it services and inside of this folder we can create a new file and let's name it assets underscore manager dot dart and in here what we can do is to create a new class and this class let's name it assets manager and then in here let's initialize the static you know why i want it st static and then um, define a string and then we can say image path and now in here we can add the image path so the image path we can get it directly from here and then add it just like that now we have access to the image path i can use the image path directly in here so to add it we need to use the dollar sign and add it like that and now i still have an error of course because we need to call the class name then call the the name of the variable so assets manager our class name then dot image path now if i restart it it should work just the same of course yeah it didn't work because we didn't add the forward slash at the end so make sure to add it here and now it should work as you can see it worked just fine now what we can do even better is that even for this image path we can add it also in the assets manager and we can add all of the other images just here so what i'm gonna do is to add all of the images here so to make our life easier so here what i did is that i added everything here so we have the images path profile images path which is this uh, this folder banners images path which is this folder and these images we will be using it uh, over our application later on we don't need this line of code um, we will not uh, use uh, animations okay so now in the profile screen let's remove this and let's remove all this thing and in this case we need to use the shopping um, cart or basket for example and now if i restart the application okay let's use the shopping uh, cart restart the application and now we have this image over here of course you notice that the background color we want it just the same as the scaffold background color so in order to do this we can add the background color here for this app bar so you can use the theme dot of context dot scaffold background color and save it and now i have it just like that okay for the elevation we can use elevation of zero and save it and that's it now what we can do even better just to generalize the app bar theme we can add it in the theme data also so what i'm gonna do is to copy this go to the theme data and then in the theme data here let's add the app bar theme so for the app bar theme, you just need to add it like that. So app bar theme, and then we need to give it what we have here. And of course, for the uh, scaffold background color, we can use it just like we did here. Better. Okay, let's format our code. And now we can remove the, these two lines from here because we generalize it in the theme data. Now the text, you cannot see it because we need to add also the text style. But later on, I think in the next tutorial, we will implement this widget and uh, we'll give it this color and 
the moving color and the background. But for now, just to make it clear for you, we can add in here text style. So in here, we can add the title text style. And for the title text style, we can add text style here. And then you can specify the color as what you want. So we can check if it is dark theme, for example. We can add a white color, but if it's not, we can add, um, let's say, black color. And if I save it, we should see now the text here. Okay, you can add the font, uh, font size and everything you want, but I don't want to waste time to it because we won't use it here. But I'll just keep it for now, just like that. Now we can continue our code. And uh, for that, let's uh, add first the text if the user is not logged in. So what I'm going to do is to remove this body and, and uh, instead of this body, let's add a column. Let's add children. And in here, we can add text or title text widget, for example, and then we can say, um, please log in to have unlimited access let's say just like that now save it and let's come back to our application and now we can see it in here of course we can wrap it by some padding if you want so what i'm gonna do is to wrap it by padding like that and let's uh, choose 18 as padding of course you can change the the padding as what you want the constant you can add it here but later on it might be unnecessary because we will add other widgets and it might be not constant also this widget it might appear or it might not appear depending if the user is logged in or not so what we can do is to wrap it by a new widget which is the visible widget or we can do an if statement to to check if uh, we need to show it or not which is you will see it later on more in the Firebase section. How can we manipulate the UI depending on the values we have? Also in the state management section, we will do that. So for now, I'll just give it uh, false as visibility. And now, because I give it false, now it's not appearing on the screen. Let's remove uh, these costs from here just for now. And then now we need to create a row Why we need a row to, if you see this widget here, we have this image, then we have the name and the Gmail here. So let's continue. And for that, let's define this row. Let's give it the children. And of course I have this error because I added this const here. So now let's just add the const before the visibility. The first chart for this row is the image. So to define the image, we need to define there is many ways in order to do the image. So the way that I will use is that I will use a container. I'll give it width of 60 and height of 60. And then we can give it decoration. And for decoration, we can give it the box decoration. And then we can give it the shape, which is a, of a shape circle. So we call it box shape dot circle. And then for the color, we can give it a color, which is, it won't appear basically because we will show the image. So for the color, I will use the card color like that, if we want to use it. And now we need to define the border. So uh, the border, you will see why. And to define it, we need to define it just like that border dot all. And then we can specify the color and for the color i will choose the background color so for that also we need to call the theme dot of context and then we can call the background color but it's removed as you can see like that so we call the colors scheme uh, scheme and then we call the background just like that okay so now for this border we can also add the width i'll choose uh, width of three Now we can add our image. So we have an argument called image here, and then we need to define the decoration image. And uh, it takes an argument also called image. And in here, we need to give it network image 
like that and we need to specify the url and you need to define it like that it is network image when it is inside of decoration image but you have something else that is called the image dot asset or dot network for example okay but if it is in the decoration image you need to use it like that and we have something called asset image for example but in our case we need to use the network image because later on we will be fetching this value from the firebase for example or uh, from the other backend that it will be in this course okay because this course will have different backends so later on we will fetch this image from the backend okay so let's give it uh, a url so i'll use this image let's add the comma and then format our code now save it now i have it here okay perfect so uh, you can see this blue color is actually the border if i change this color for example to red we will have border as red as you can see so you can play with this color as what you want there is another argument for this decoration image which is the fit argument and this is will specify if you want it to fit uh, the whole width for example or just a little bit of it so you can play with this value to understand better what does it mean for me i want to fill the whole width and height so i'll use fill okay so this widget is now done now let's add the widgets for uh, the name and for the email so for that let's use the title text widget for the name so let's uh, i'll just use my name and then for the email we can use uh, subtitle text widget and then specify the email and of course later on we will be reading this from the back end so let's say coding with hadi my gmail and then dot com and save it and now it appeared like that to make it uh, more clear for us we can wrap this row for example by padding and uh, for the padding we can wrap it by eight padding or we can use symmetric padding and for the symmetric padding you have horizontal and vertical so uh, for me i'll use it horizontal only and i'll choose for example 20 and save and now you have it like that of course you can change this value as what you want so i'll just use it like that let's say now for this name and this email we can add spacing between uh, between these and we can add spacing between these two widgets and the image widget in order to do this it is simple we can add the size it box here and then we can add width and we can add the width of 10 for example save and now we have space here between both of them and uh, here to move the name and gmail to the left to the start we can add cross axis alignment and put it to start and now we have it at the start and we can add spacing here between the two widget so let's say sized box and give it height of six and that's it now let's add the const keywords just like that so this widget is done and what we can do also is to wrap it by a visible widget or visibility widget and give it visible for now i'll keep it true now we can continue our work and then we have this widget here general and then we have these four widgets so for that let's uh, create a title inside of our main column so before uh, below us is uh, visibility so we can here say title text widget and we give it the label and put it uh, to general now save and we have the general here let's add uh, some spacing between the widgets so let's say size box and give it height of 15 and now save it and let's add the const keyword and we need to move this general to the left so in order to do this we need to add the cross axis alignment here also and put it to the start just like that 
Now, as you can see, we don't have spacing to the left, so we need to wrap it by some padding. And what we can do is to wrap all of this by a new column to add uh, new padding for this column only, for example, not for the whole widgets, not for the main column, which is up in here. Okay. So let's uh, wrap this by padding. And the padding, of course, you can change it as what you want. I'll put 14, for example. And now let's uh, continue. And we need now to create the widgets for these four different widgets. As you can see, it is similar. So we can create custom widget for it, just like what we did for the text. So for that, let's uh, first create the widget. So it is actually a list style. And this uh, list style, it takes a uh, on top function, which is when we press on it, it will do something. For now, let's keep it empty. And then it takes uh, a title. For the title, let's give it, uh, for example, the first one, it is about the orders. So let's say all orders. Then we need to give it an image. So for the image, we can give it the leading. And in here, it will be image.asset. And for, in our case, it will be assets dot for now let's use just the address that's fine we will change it later on because we will create a custom widget and for the height let's give it height of 32 or 30 let's say and finally we have the widget here i don't know if you can see it but we have an icon here and to add an icon at the end we can add um, a named argument called trailing and now in here we can add icon and we can use the icon light or bold, whatever you want, or any icon type. And we can add the arrow um, right, for example, this one. And we can see how it is now. So I have it like that. We can, you have multiple options for the arrows. I'll choose this one that appear just like that. Okay. For the, for this one, we can choose for this image, we can make it bigger as what you want. And uh, for the text, in here we can use, for example, the subtitle text widget and add label. And now if I save it, it is showing like that. Okay, let's use the dark theme. It is also showing like that. Now to bring this general to the left, Let's add the cross axis alignment here and put it to start. And now it is like that. And we can add the size box here and give it height of 10, let's say. Okay, so now it is like that. What we can do now is to make this list style as a custom widget. So for that, I will just cut this widget. We can create a new file or we can create a stateless widget directly here. It is okay. So I will name it custom list style. And in here, we can return our code. Instead of this placeholder, so let's return our code just like that. Of course, the function will be dynamic, the label will be dynamic, and the image will be dynamic. So what we can, we can do is to define a string here, the first one for the image path. Then we have the text or label, for example, we can directly define it like that and uh, separate it by a comma. Then we need to define the function. You can define a void callback or a function. For now, let's stick with the function. And now we need to add it to the constructor as required arguments like that. We can add a semicomma here. I mean a comma here just to format our code. And then the function, we can use it here and make sure to use it just like what I did. Otherwise it won't work. Some people will try to use it, uh, for example, like that. It won't work, okay? Just use it this way. Okay, for the label, we can use the um, text. Of course, I got an error because it's not const anymore. Then for this one, we need to use our image path. 
and that's it now we can use this custom this tile and add it here so first we need to add uh, the image path or we can add first the text so the first text will be for the all orders then for the image path we can add the the orders which is the orders svg this icon and for the function i'll give it just empty function for now later on we will fix it let's format our code and that's it now i will copy this and paste it three different times one for the wish list and for the other ones so wish list we viewed recently and address so here let's uh, change it to wish list and here we need to use the wish list then we have uh, another one for the viewed recently and in here let's say use the recent icon and of course all of these assets i already added here okay i added to this image and i added to the assets manager file so this is why i have access to it and then this one we will use uh, the address and here we can use the address just like that so now maybe you noticed why it is very important to understand how can you make custom widget to make our life really easier let's uh, restart the application and now it is showing here what's left to do is to add the theme widget so here i have the settings and we have this list style that we already added the switch list style these widgets we don't have to add it and we have to add the logout or log in button so let's continue and for the settings we can copy this and with the size box so let's copy and then we can paste it here and let's see say settings save and now we have it here of course we can add space between the settings in here like that and then we need to add the list style switch list style which is we already have it and uh, the home screen so for that let's copy this switch list style and go back to the profile screen we can paste it here we don't have this theme provider so let's get it back from the home screen just from here and then we need to define to define it and the build here and we need to import it just like that now we start the application and now we have it here okay so it would be better if we add an, a logo here or an image for example so in order to do this we can add something called secondary and for this secondary we have to add an image asset and from the asset we, uh, manager we can add the theme icon or button and that's it here we can give it a height of 30 or 34 just like the others and that's it now we need to add the icon or uh, i mean the button and what's special about this button and that it has this icon and in order to do this we have something implemented in flutter so below of this padding the, and and the general column and the highest column so this one here we can define an elevated button dot icon for now the on press let's keep it empty for the icon let's give it icon and then let's say icons dot log n for now and for the label let's give it log n and of course it will be in a text is a widget not a string this label and when you don't know what the type you can hover on it and that's it it is a widget let's add the const keyword and that's it now let's save and we have this uh, this button here to put it in the center we can wrap it in a center just like that and uh, if you want to make it rounded, we can make it uh, rounded.
anyway, if you notice that the design is, uh, is quite different, i um, doing this uh, on purpose, but I'll try to make it as much as I can, very similar to what I built in the main application. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I want you to practice and just to apply uh, what you find best and suit you the best, okay? So you might prefer it in this way, but I prefer another way. So I just want you to be creative and do what you like. But I'm showing you all these steps. So let's continue and to make this button rounded, there's many ways, but we can add this style. And for this style, we can call the elevated button dot from style, uh, I mean style from, and then in here you can give it something called uh, shape. And for the shape, there's something called rounded rectangle border. And this rounded rectangle border, it has an argument called border radius. And this border radius, we can give it border radius dot circular. And in here you can give it the radius that you want. Okay, so for the radius, I'll give it, uh, for example, 12, or you can give it more, like 30. Just like that. If you want to change the color, we can change it also. I'll show it to you how. So in the style here, we can add background color, and you can specify the color as what you want. Just like that. Okay. So now the design is very similar to what I built in here. Um, feel free to play around with it as, as you want, and you will find attached uh, this code to your uh, to this lecture, of course, as usual. So feel free to use my code in your project to avoid any problem, okay? And uh, what we can do, for example, also, we can add a new widget, which is the divider widget, if you want. So we can add divider widget here and now if I save it we can see here a divider I don't know if you can see it but for example we can add the thickness to make it clear for you and save and now I have this divider here so you can add it if you want and instead of 10 I'll choose maybe 6 for example okay and for the thickness I'll just keep it 1 Okay, let's add the const keyword and this divider, we can define it also here. Okay, and you can add sized box. So yeah, feel free to play around with it as what you want. It's really easy and it will make you understand better and better. Okay, so I think that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will implement uh, this widget. The title widget it would be a good practice for you to try to understand maybe uh, or think about it how can we do this but if you don't want we will just implement it in the next tutorial so i'll see you there hi guys in this tutorial we're going to implement this widget so this text with the moving background so let's get started in order to implement it we will need a new package so for that, you need to go to this website, as I showed you before, and then you need to go to the installing and add the requirement into your spec.yaml file. So in here, in the readme, you have an example, and this is basically what we will implement in this tutorial. Okay, so always make sure to read the readme. Then you have here an example, and you need to install it, so you copy this and you add it to your pubspec.yaml file. For me, I already added it, here and I cut the process and then I run it again just to save some time. Now let's continue and what I'm gonna do is if you noticed here we have this widget here and we also have the same widget here. So what we can do is to create a new widget or a new file and this new file will be our app name text widget so I'll name it like that then create a stateless widget and now we can create this up name text widget just like that in here we need to use the title and in here you can name your application as what you want I'll name it like that or let's say shop smart and then what we need to do is to wrap this widget 
by the example that it is showing you in here. So in here they are they they wrap it with this shimmer dot from color and I think in the example you have other examples so you can have a look on it if you want to play around with it. But for me I'll just use this one. So here let's wrap it by shimmer. Make sure to import it and then you have this. And then now it takes two required arguments which are the base color so the color that you will see and the moving background color so here i will choose the red color we need to import the material package then for this one we can use the purple color for example just like that now this widget is ready to be used and we can use it in the profile screen instead of the text and the r bar so instead of this one here we need to import it and add the parentheses here and now restart the application and let's uh, go back so here here it is now it is showing here as you noticed the moving background is very fast so we can fix this and the way to fix this is actually by adding something called period which is actually a duration if you overrun it it is a duration and the duration you can just give it like that and then you can use specify the time that you want in my case i can put it for example to seconds and i can choose 12 you can play with this value as what suits your needs now restart the application and now this moving background is slower than before of course you can make it more i can make it for example 22 and save it and now it is being uh, slower than before Okay, so when I restarted, it is showing you clearly now that it is slower than before. Okay, so uh, what we can do also is that we can add the font size here and we can ma make it dynamic. So we can define a font size and pass it through the constructor and we can give it, for example, a value. I'll show you how. So a default value. So instead of making it required here, we can just give it a default value and the default value it can be 30 for example just like that and now it's not constant anymore this title text widget okay just like that now let's go back to the profile screen restart the application and let's see and now this text is bigger so what we can do is to give it the font size for example to 20 and now it is smaller and why it was bigger because as I showed you, we gave it a default value here to 30. So if we don't pass a new value, the default value will be 30, okay? So this is why I passed from here 20. Okay, so I'll add the const keyword and that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will implement the cart empty screen. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. In this tutorial, we will implement the empty card screen. So it is like that. And if you check the application or the video where I explained how this application works, you might have noticed that this screen is very similar to the screen and the wishlist, for example, this empty screen here, um, very similar to this one also. So for that, we can make it as a custom widget. But to get started, let's write the code and the card screen. So let's get back to our application and now what I'm gonna do in the root screen is to set the card screen as the default screen so that when I restart it it will be by default set to the card screen okay now I'll close all here and then we can go to the card screen and start writing our code for that delete this create column and for the children of course first let's remove this const and for the children, the first child will be the image asset image. And in our case, we can give it the shopping basket, save it, and here it is. Now, what we can do is actually we can give it height and width. I want to give it the full width. So for that, we can give it double dot infinity. I want to give it the third of the height. In order to do this, we need to access the size of 
the screen so this is also help you if you want to make more responsive design so we can create a size here i mean define a size and in order to access the size of the screen we can use the media curry then you call off context and then you need to access the size just like that and now from the size you can access the height and the width like that now in order to take the third of the screen you can multiply it by 0 0.3 i'll take this much for me and now when i save it it is like that now if i remove this it will take the full height and it is like that and now we got an error this error is very important to notice so what i'm gonna do now to remove this i mean just uh, keep it as as it was and then i will show you how to deal with this error let's continue now and in here let's define a title text widget and let's say for example whoops save it and now we have this text here we can give it font size of 40 for example and color of red color so colors dot red save it add the const keyword okay now if you want to add spacing between these widgets you can add uh, the size box and give it value for example 20 okay now we need to add the other text so in order to do this i will define subtitle text widget and in here let's say for example your cart is empty save it and here it is if you want to give it font weight you can give it the font weight and we can set it for example to 600 700 as you like okay then we need to give it another subtitle so for example so for example i'll say looks like your cart is empty add something and make me happy so i added this text and now i will save it and i have it like that of course this one we can make it lighter like that and we can add spacing here and below like that and we can wrap this widget by padding for example now save it and here it is now when you write a string if you want to go to another line what you can do is for example you add slash and n and you save it and now you go to another to a new line so i'll just remove it i wanted just to show you this and finally now we need to add the elevated button so for that you can add the button uh, it will be an empty function for now or you can add something so I gave it this text. Now uh, when I save it, it shows here. And if you want to play with the design, I showed you how. So you can add this style and you can add the uh, elevated button dot style from and then you can give it, for example, the elevation to zero. If you want, uh, we can add the color to red, for example. And then we can add uh, if you want to make it bigger you can add padding here so let's say edge ansets and give it to all and give it 25 save it and now it is like that and we can use for example symmetric padding and then we can give it horizontal we can say for example 20 and vertical give it 10 maybe it looks better like that so you can play around with it as what it suits your needs for me, I'll just keep it like that. Now what I'm going to do is to add some padding at the top. And in order to do this, we can add the size box at the top. Or we can wrap this column by padding. It is the same. So I'll just add this size box here. And it is like that now. Now if I make this size box huge, for example, with this height. Now as you can see, we have this error that I showed you before. 
In order to deal with this error, it is simple. We just need to wrap this column by single child scroll view. Save it. And now the error is gone. And now I can scroll. Okay, here it is. This single child scroll view, it has physics. You can choose, for example, bouncing scroll physics. And now when I scroll, it will be scrolling like that. Okay. There is other things such as never scroll physics, which is I showed you when I explained the root screen, the bottom bar, to not allow the screen to move. And now, as you can see, it's not moving anymore. I cannot scroll it. And if I restart, I think I'll get an error. Okay, I didn't get an error, but I cannot scroll. So I'll just keep it for you bouncing scroll physics. So if you want to play around with it, there's some other types you can choose it. And this one, I'll just revert it and keep it 50. So this card screen is now done. But what we can do is to make it dynamic. So let's create a custom widget out of it. In order to do this, let's cut our code. And then let's create a new file and let's name it empty bug dot dart and in here let's create a stateless widget let's name it empty bug widget and then here we can paste our code just like that we need to import the required packages and files so let's import it and we need to define the size so for the size i'll just cut it from here and define it here and now the error is gone now we need to make this image dynamic and the text here dynamic bottom text dynamic so let's do it in order to do this we need to define four different variables so which are the image path for example and it is of type string so better to specify it so we know then we have the title then we have the subtitle then we have the bottom text and now what we can do is to add it to the constructor. And of course, we need to use these values. So instead of this asset image, we need to use our image path. Then here, we need to use the subtitle. Then it's not const anymore. And here we'll also need to use the actually here we need to use the title and down we need to use the subtitle so i'll cut this and let's say subtitle here and we need to remove this const and add it here now for this text we can add the shop now i mean the bottom text here and then remove this const now we can use this file inside of the card screen. So we can use the empty bug widget and we need to give it the required arguments. So in our case, the asset, we need to use the shopping basket for the title. Let's say your cart is empty. Then for the subtitle, I'll paste what I have. So like that. And for the bottom text, I'll just keep it shop now. Okay, so if I restart it, nothing will be changed, but now we make we made our life easier. So this line of code or this widget, we can use it in uh, many other files, such as the wishlist that we used uh, recently, and we will just need to use this line of code. We need we don't have to define all of this anymore. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you on the next one. Hi guys, in the last tutorial, we successfully implemented this page. In this tutorial, now we will implement this page. So when the user adds something to his cart, we need to show this page, of course. So in order to get started, I just want you to understand what are the components of this page. So in this screen or page, we have this app bar which is very similar to what we implemented in the profile screen here. 
then we have these components. And then at the end, we have this bottom widget. Great, so let's get started. For that, what I'm gonna do is to create a new folder and I will name it card. Then I'll move this file to this card. Then I'll create a new file. I'll name it card underscore widget dot dart. And in here, we can create a stateless widget and I'll name it card widget like that. In here, I'll just keep it like that for now. Let's go back to the card screen. And for that, we have this widget here that we implemented in the last tutorial. But we don't want to show this widget now, or we don't want to show it when the user adds something to his cart. So what I'm going to do is to define a boolean. Of course, later on, we will do a real check. But for now, I'll just define a boolean here. So uh, we can name it is empty. And initially, I'll set it to false. And now we can do an if statement on it. So we can do an if statement like that, or we can do an if statement for the whole scaffold. And then, so if this if statement is satisfied, we show this widget. Otherwise, we show the widget after the semicolon. Okay, let's continue. And now let's define another scaffold. And the scaffold, let's give it uh, a body. And as a body, we can give it list view dot builder. So this list view dot builder is actually the best considering the performance. So it only renders the things that it's being displayed on the screen. And this is done by the Flutter team, so it's very good for the performance. So this is why I strongly recommend you to use it in such cases, better than the normal list view. So now this item builder, it takes a context and it takes an index. You can name the index whatever you want. Then in here, we need to return something. In my case, I will return the cart widget like that. And this list view dot builder, it takes too many arguments. So what I'm going to do is to give it item count of 10, for example. And let's restart the application and see. OK, let's go back to our application. And I will start it again. OK, so it's showing like that. This is actually the placeholder widget, which is coming from here. Before that, I continue. Let's implement the app bar. And for the app bar, we can take the code from the profile screen. So I'll just copy it from here. Then come back to the card screen and paste it here. And instead of this app name widget, we can use uh, or define a title text widget. And in here, we can give it card. And then later on, we fetch the card uh, number, for example. Now let's save it. And here it is. We have it here. At the end, we have a button here in order to clear the whole card. In order to do this, we can add something called actions and the app bar. So in here, we can call something called uh, icon button. So here, let's give it empty function for now. And then for the icon, let's give it icon. For example, dot delete, you have a lot of options. And as you can see, you can view it. So choose what suits you. And now save it. And nothing appeared on the screen. But if I press here, now you can see it. So this is need to, to be fixed. We want to show black color here instead of white color, for example. To fix this, we can fix it from the theme and we can go to the upper theme and in here we can add something called icon theme. It takes icon theme data and in here we can give it the color. We can do a check about if it is dark, so we give the white color. But if it is light, we can give the dark color or black. Now save and here it is, it appeared in here. Perfect. So now we can continue our work and start implementing this widget. So let's go to the cart widget and first try to understand 
what are the components of this widget. So we have here this image. Beside to it, we have this title. Then we have these buttons with the title in a row. We have this title with the price and a column. And this price, we have it also in a row with this button. Just try to think about it. You might use another code to achieve same thing, but this is how I implement it. And I'll show you how step by step. So let's get started. For that, actually, we will use a new package. So if I go to the search screen, as you can see, the images are being loaded. So we have this animation. And this animation can be done using a very efficient package, which is called the fancy shimmer image. So the fancy shimmer image, you can search for this fancy shimmer image in the pop.dev. And then you go to the readme here. And down below, you have an example here. Of course, we need to install it. So I'll copy this and add it to the pubspec.yaml file just below of this shimmer. Of course, we could use this shimmer widget in order to implement it, but this package is efficient, so we can directly use it. Okay. And after installing this package, we need to stop the process and run our application again to make sure that we can use it. Now let's uh, continue in here. Let's return a row. Of course, it's not const. And we need to import the material package. Like that. And then the first child will be the fancy shimmer image. Now it's not showing. So what we can do is to go to the readme or to the example here. And then we can copy this code. They usually give you an example about the packages. Okay. And now try to import it. And now it is available. You can even get the import from here somewhere. For example, from the installing, they always give you the import here. Okay. Let's come back. Now, instead of this URL, I will use my URL. So I will use this image. Now let's go back to our application and let's see. Okay, it's still running. At the meantime, what I'm, I'm going to do is to add the size. And to add the size, I showed you how we define it here in the empty widget. So we can copy it and come back to the cart widget. And in here, we can define it. And then let's give it height of, uh, for example, you can give it as much as you want. I'll give it 0 0.2 of the height. And then for the width, let's do the same like that. Now save it. And let's see. Perfect. So it's being loaded here. And it appears like that. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is to wrap this row by padding. Save it. Now we have some padding. And what I'm gonna do also is to wrap this fancy shimmer image to give it some rounded corners, we can use something called clip rect. As you can see, we have two widgets. We need the widget with two R's. And now this widget, it takes border radius. And the border radius, we can give it circular. And then you can use uh, what you want. I'll use a value of 12. Maybe it's not clear uh, for you, the color. So it is like that. But if I use zero now, for example, now we don't have any border. Okay. So this is how we add border to an image. Of course, there is many ways, but this is also an efficient one. I also showed you this image here, and we could give a border radius also for it using the container. Okay, so there is many, many ways, and I'm trying to cover many things as I can in this tutorial. So now let's continue, and here we have the text. So we can, to add it, I will define a column, of course. And uh, in here, let's define a title, text widget. And for the label, let's give it, for example, title. And I will give it times 10, for example. Let's save. And now I have it like that, and I got this error. OK. What I'm going to do is to continue coding, and we'll fix this error very soon. So I wrapped this title now with the row to add the two 
icon buttons. So we have an icon button to add the delete icon. So let's say icon button and in here we can give it for example delete or clear or remove icon. You have multiple options. I will use the clear icon. You can give it the color so we can use the red color. Save. Of course it won't appear and then what I'm gonna do is to add the other icon and then we fix the error. So the other icon will be the heart one. So I'm gonna use the iconly. Light dot heart for example like that and the color I'll just remove it. Okay so now let's get rid of this annoying error. In order to do this please follow the same steps as me. So let's give it a specified width and in order to do this we can use a package called untransing height or width. In our case I want to give it for width. So make sure to give it like that. What I'm gonna do also is to wrap this text with the sized box and give it width of for example width dot times 0 0.6 now save okay we have some changes here give it max lines of 2 save okay I don't know if you can see the three dots but we have three dots and then now it appeared so we have these three dots here okay we need to do something else also is to wrap this padding by fitted box save and now it worked and to avoid any future error also make sure to wrap it by also this widget here like that okay just to make sure that we won't get any other error now these two icons i want it in a column so what i'm gonna do is to wrap this button by column and put this one inside just like that so i have it like that now okay before that i continue let's add uh, some spacing between the image and the title so for that we can give it width Okay, now if you want to move these widgets to the start, we can simply add the cross axis alignment argument to this row and put it to start. Save. Now we have it at the start. Okay, let's continue. And uh, inside of this column with its text, for example, but of course outside of this row, so inside of this column here, we need to define another row that will handle the price and it will handle also the other button to choose the quantity. So here we have the price. So let's say 16.00 and let's add the dollar sign. To add the dollar sign, we need to add this backward slash. Now save and let's uh, give it, for example, a blue color. So it might look cooler. Okay. And then we need to give it the button. There is many ways in order to do this as uh, this shape of this button now, which is uh, showing here. But for now, uh, I'll just use the outlined button, which is very efficient. So we can define the outlined button, which is here. And it is very similar to the other buttons, text button or elevated button, for example. Here you need to give it the child. I'll just give it text and, th and say for example putty i equal to, to something let's say let's just try it now and I have it like that but in my case I have this icon and it is rounded corners so let's do this what I'm gonna do is to remove this you can define something called outlined button.icon very similar to the elevated button.icon that I showed you here we need to give it the icon in my case I'll give it the iconly light 
and we can choose the arrow down to then for the label can use a text and then for this text we can give it uh, for example let's say quantity and you can give it value for now of course later on we will change it it will be dynamic and uh, for now let's save it let's see how it looks so now we have this icon in here let's try with the light mode and here it is and i don't know if you can see it but we have borders here what we can do now is to play around with the corners but of course first let's add for example spacing between for example let's keep the price to the left and the bottom to the right and in order to do this we can add the main axis alignment space between we need to use the space between like that and by the way feel free to play around with zero if you don't know it to understand better how it is and if you want to know more about the widgets you can read the widgets dialog from the flutter team uh, website okay so uh let's uh i'll just comment this for you actually and save it again and now we have it uh, next to each others but what we can do also i want to show you another approach is to use the spacer widget okay just like that it do the same work as this line of code okay so now let's add some style for for this button and as a style we can use the outlined button dot from a style from just like the elevated button as i showed you and this style we can give it the side and in here we can give something called border side and then you can use the width for example if i use five and save and now i have this huge width in here so you can play around with it um maybe i can keep it two for example or one for you so just feel free to play around with it and then what i'm gonna do is to add uh, rounded border and this thing actually we defined it before so in order to do this we need to use this shape then define the rounded rectangle border and give it the border radius and we can give it border radius dot circular give it value of 30 for example save and now i have it just like that okay so uh, i strongly recommend you to play around with the ui and this way you will learn and uh, before that i end this tutorial let's go back to the card screen for this uh, icon we can use the colors dot red like that okay now before that i end this tutorial i would just want to go to the profile screen so profile screen here and in here to avoid any overflow error let's wrap this by single child scroll view okay so just to avoid any error i wanted to wrap it by single child for a scroll view so now this is scrollable and what you can do is to give it for example the physics and say bouncing scroll physics so now uh, before that i end this tutorial i'll just add a few other things so just to make sure that it is working so save now i can scroll okay and it's doing like that because it is bouncing so if i remove this save it will it will be scrollable again but it's not bouncing anymore okay so feel free to play around with this okay so i'll just keep it uh, like that for you and that's it for this tutorial feel free if you have any question and the next tutorial we will implement the bottom bar which is this one and after that we will implement this bottom sheet for the quantity so i'll see you on the next one as i said in the last tutorial in this tutorial we will implement this bottom widget to get started i'll create a new file inside of the cart and i will name it bottom underscore checkout to dart then we can create a stateless widget and we can name it for example card bottom sheet widget and then if we look to the at this widget we have a row that contain these two texts then it has this to check out to the right and these two texts st stand inside of a column so to do this let's define a row in here so let's say uh, row 
of course we need to import the material package so let's import it like that then give it the children and the first child will be the title like that here so let's give it the title text widget then we give it the label the label will be it's not a title actually it is the number of the product so we have the number of the products and number of the items the items um, is when we change the quantity for example so we will have uh, the quantity also added so here because I have four for example and all of the other products so we have nine items okay so later on we will manage this and then uh, let's say in here six products then we have nine items for example and what I'm gonna do is to wrap this widget by a column and then let's add the const keyword here and in here now let's add the subtitle text widget and let's give it price for example and then we can give it the blue color so for that let's give it colors.blue and that's it now what we can do also is to add uh, the button but first I like to to show it for you so you understand maybe better for that let's go to the card screen and for this scaffold there is an argument it called bottom sheet and now we can use our widget just like that and of course we need to import it so let's import it and let's go to our application and then let's restart it and see what will happen okay so once I restart it I have it like that so it's taking the whole width what we need to do is to give it a specific width I mean it's taking the whole height so we need to give it a defined height we can give it the bottom bar height for example so for that what we can do is to wrap this row by sized box so sized box and we can give it a height of uh, for example bottom bar height plus 10 and now if I save it I have it just like that now to move this text here we can add the cross axis alignment for this column and put it to the start save now we have the price also to the left we can wrap all of this by some padding now save it and what we can do also uh, actually let's add the button and the, for the button I showed you how so let's define an elevated uh, button and for now it will take an empty function and for the text let's say check out just like that and now save it and I have this button here if you want it uh, do you want to keep space between uh, each, each uh, of the widgets you can add the main axis alignment and put it to space between now save it and I have it now like that and what left actually is that for example let's try on the dark mode yeah we can give it the background color and uh, we can give it some elevation or we can add the uh, divider here at the top so we can add the color and add the uh, this line above by using the container so let's uh, wrap this padding by a container like that let's give it color first so let's say colors.red now the color changed and what I'm gonna do is to add the decoration and now I will save it and I will get an error I did this on purpose because I don't want you to get this error if you don't know it so I got this error because I defined color and I defined decoration if you define a decoration you need to define the color and side of the decoration so be careful for it about this now save it and it's working just fine and now in order to add the border we define a border and then in here you can choose whatever you want uh, where you want to put your border in my case I just want it on the top and for that uh, you can choose the width for example uh, first we need to define the border side of course and then for this border side we can specify the width you can use uh, two or three I would put it for th uh, two three just to show it for you now save 
and then something appeared in here i'm not sure if you can see it let's try the white color and yeah here it appear uh, better maybe if i remove uh, this color so yeah i have it in here so now i will choose uh, one save and the color i will use the gray color and for the background color i will use here the scaffold background color so let's use the theme dot of context then dot scaffold background color just like that now save and here it is it is pretty much the same as this one now this tutorial is now done but i want to show you something so uh, what I want to show you is actually if I remove this const from here and let's multiply this text by let's say 12 and save. In this case, I'm getting an error. This is overflow error. There is many ways in order to fix this, but uh, a good one is that, for example, you can wrap this column by a flexible widget. Save. And now I have it like that. We have these three dots at the end is because we added in the title text widget this uh, text overflow dot ellipses in here okay so this is why we have these three dots and then if you want to show all of it you can do this by wrapping this title text widget by uh, another widget it called fitted box but it's not a good idea because now you see the text is very very small so the users won't be able to see it. So if I put it to two, for example, now I have it like that, but also the text is very small. So uh, so in our case in here, in this specific case, the text won't be big, but for example, for this widget, for example, for the cart widget in here, we give it the title and we give it lines of two. So we only show two lines, then we we add these three dots and if we want to show the whole title we can show it in the product details screen okay so this is a good uh, ui and this is a good management to keep it in mind so uh, for me i'll just keep uh, the code uh, like that for you but feel free to play around with it and that's it uh, for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will implement this bottom sheet okay so if you want to try it before uh, watching next tutorial it would be a good idea so uh, feel free to try it okay so uh, i'll see you in the next one in this tutorial let's implement the quantity bottom sheet so for that let's create a new file inside of the card folder and let's name it quantity underscore bottom underscore sheet the dot create a stateless widget here and we can name it quantity bottom sheet uh, widget something like that in here we have a list view as you can see so we can use the list view dot builder we can give it the uh, of course we need to give it uh, the item builder that stake context and index and we need to return something here we will return subtitle text widget for example and in our case we can use the index dot to string like that but instead of writing it like that I showed you how can we we can write it we can put it into quotation inside of the quotation and use the dollar sign just like that then we can specify the item count I'll give it 25 for example and this widget is now ready to be used so we can use it in the cart uh, quantity here we, we define this outlined button which is actually this button because we need to show the dialog when the user press on it and when the user uh, press on it we perform a future function because the dialog consider as a future function it is something that will happen in the future so this is why it is a future function so uh, to use a future function I used to, I told you how I explained it so we define this async here we add it before these brackets then we add the await keyword and then we use a function build in function it called show model bottom sheet it takes the context and an item builder for the builder you need to give it the context then you need to return something in our case we will return the quantity bottom sheet just like that 
uh, to see my uh, see me comma here and save it. And now if I press here, I have my bottom sheet just like that. Okay, so I'll put it uh, as dark mode and let's try. Okay, so I have it like that. The first thing I want to do is to change the background color. And in order to do this, we can add in here directly background color. And we can use the scaffold background color. Like that. If I save. Close it. Then open it again. Like that. And now we have the new update. We have the scaffold background color. Okay. The second thing, thing I want to do is to add the border, uh, border radius because we have it, uh, we have borders here. So what we can do is to add uh, shape in here and we add the rounded rectangular uh, uh, border just as I showed you in the previous tutorials. And in here what we need to do is to give it the border radius. And for the border radius we need to use border radius dot only because we want to show it only from the top sides. So we use the top left and then we give it radius to circular and uh, in my case I will use 30 just uh, so that it appears clearer and then for the top right we define also radius to circular and we can use 30 also format our code save it and now close it and open it again and here it is as you can see Okay, so I'll try it again. Here it is. Now it, uh, it appears clearly. Okay, so now let's come back to the quantity bottom sheet. Here I can scroll it. This is fine. What I'm gonna do is to wrap this subtitle text widget by center. Save. Now I have it in the center. And what we can do also is to wrap it by some padding. So now I have it like that. If you feel the padding is big, we can wrap it by only four. And now we need to add the handler above. So um, actually this widget here, which is a container. So in order to do this, we need to wrap this list view uh, or we, can, we need to put it inside of a column. And in order to do this, let's wrap it by a column and now Let's save our code or restart the application and let's see what will happen. Okay, so I got an error. This error because you cannot just put a list view inside of a column. There's few extra steps that you need to do. I'll show you one approach, but we won't use it now. So this approach is to add the physics and put it to never scroll physics. Then you need to add the shink wrap, put it to true and now save. Now the previous error is gone and now you have uh, the overflow error. And to get rid of this overflow error, as usual, we need to wrap it by single child scroll view. Now if I save it, here it is. It is working just same as before. But what I'm going to do is to remove this widget. Then comment these two lines and I'll keep it like that for you for now. And the approach that we will use is that we need to just wrap it by expanded widget. As you can see now, it's working just fine. Be careful if you have two list view inside of your column, this method, it won't work. You need to wrap it uh, or give it a specified height in order to make it work. Okay. So now we're safe and we can add the other widget in the top, which is this widget. So for that, I defined this container and I gave it height of 6 width of 50 and I gave it this decoration with this border radius and the color. The color we need to import the material package for it and now I'll come back to our application then save it and here it is if you can see it. What we can do is to add the padding to the top and below. Now save it and now I have it in here. Okay, so now it is just the same as the main application. Same as this one. Now what left to be done is that when the user press on it, I want to know that the user pressed on it. And in order to do this, we can wrap this text, subtitle text field 
buy something or we can just wrap all of it all of this widget so this is what i'm gonna do there is a widget called inkwell it takes on tab function and it will allow us to press on each of these so when i press you can see it you can see this uh, this is splash color there is another widget it's called gesture detector if i save now and try to press you don't have this splash color but it's also the same as the inkwell but it doesn't take the uh, uh, the splash color okay so i'll just keep the inkwell and uh, now just to show you i'll add a log to print uh, to print in the yellow and the console so now in here let's print the index so let's say index index like that and save now if i press i have it and my console now the last thing is that i don't want to show the zero here so what i can do is to show the index plus one like that okay so now i don't have the the zero in here because of course the user the user need to choose a valid quantity otherwise he needs to remove it okay so here it is and with this we finished everything related to the card screen that's it for this tutorial i'll see you in the next one in this tutorial we will implement this badge in here for that let's go to the root screen and search for the cart widget which is this one and then what we can do is to wrap it by a new widget it's called badge widget and you need to have flutter 3.7 and plus otherwise you need to use a package or you, you need to implement it by yourself but if you're using flutter uh, version 3.7 or plus or higher you can find it directly okay it is uh, built in and a flutter and now you need to specify a label for it and then this label it takes a widget you can give it the text and then here you can give it the count that you want of course later on it will show the real count of the products so what i did is that when i press on it i don't show this uh, badge but if you want to show it also you need to wrap this selected icon by this badge but for me, I find it unnecessary since we show it for him in here. Okay, so now if I save, I should have something here. And if it didn't appear, just try to restart the application. And let's see. Okay, so it didn't appear, of course, because this one is selected. Let's go to the search screen. And now here it is. We have it in here. If you want to change the color of the badge you can you can do this of course by adding the background color so you can add background color dot blue for example and save and then you will have it here it is if you want to change the text color also you can do you can add the text color and add the color uh, colors dot white for example and now if i switch also to black uh, to the dark theme it is also again and uh, and white so if I comment it now it is in black in here it has other arguments but these are the most important ones if you want to play around with it of course feel free to do it with this way you will learn a lot so that's it for this tutorial and the next tutorial we will implement this uh, search screen this screen so if you want to try to build it by yourself for first, then we implement it together. I'll see you on the next one. In this tutorial, let's start implementing the search screen. So for that, first, let's understand the components that are inside of this screen. First, we have the app bar. Then we have here a text field. Then below of this text field, we have these widgets, which are standing inside of, the, of a grid view, actually. So similar to the list view, we have something called the grid view in order to put the products next to each other just like that. Okay, so what I did in our application is that I added the search uh, product to a bar because it is the same as what we implemented already in the cart. So I just added it to save some time. And then let's start implementing the 
other products. So let's get started with the text field. So in here we can define a column, then define the children, then define the text field here. Now, as you can see, we have text form field also, but in our case, we'll use the text field. The text form field, this uh, would be, we will use it later on inside of the auth screens, such as the sign-in sign screen and the sign-up screen. We will use it in uh, cases, for example, to check whether the user entered a valid uh, password or email. So it's very useful and you will see it later on. But in this case, the text field is enough for now. Okay. Now I will save. And I have it here now. Now what I want to do is I want to allow the user when he press anywhere on the screen to remove the keyboard because this is really uh, efficient way of programming and user experience so the user might uh, just close it like that but we still have this cursor here which is bad and the user need to press on this button specifically in order to unfocus from here so what we can do easily is to wrap this scaffold by a gesture detector then for the function we can use a function called focus uh, scope I mean, we need to call the Fox scope and uh, we call dot off context and we call unfocus to it. Like that. Now save and focus again. Press here and here it is. It is working just fine. Okay. So this is done. Now let's do some decoration for this text. What I'm gonna do is to wrap the whole column first by some padding. And now let's do some decoration for this text. So let's add the decoration. And here we define the input decoration. For the input decoration, we need to add the borders. So you have many examples of the borders. As you can see here, we have error border. In our case, we won't have an error border now. But for example, later on in the author screens, if the user enter a wrong email, for example, we will, we will use these errors border. In my case, I will define the enabled border. So this is if the text is enabled, we show the borders. So in my case, I will use the outlined and put a border. And now we define the border side. So as you can see, it takes the border radius and it takes the border side. So for the border side, we can, as usual, as the container, we can give it the border side here. It takes the color the style and width, so on. I'll put it to two, for example, save. And now I have it like that in here. If I press on it, now the borders disappeared. And this is normal. So in order to keep showing the borders, what we need to do is to define another border, which is the focused uh, border. And we can copy this code and then use it again here. Now save. And now even if I'm focused, I have it like that. Now what we can do is actually move this decoration into the theme data. So in here we have something called input text decoration, of course, outside of the app bar. So here inside of the theme data, then we define the input text decoration. And now, as you can see, it takes the borders. So I can copy that code or I will just add it for you and then explain it. Okay, so here I added the enabled borders. I give it the border side, I give it width, and I gave it the color. Then I give it border radius and I put it to eight. You can put it to 18, for example, um, as you wish. Change it to 18. And now if I save or restart, I should see difference. Okay, let's go to the search screen. And now it didn't change, of course. Okay, I will tell you why it didn't change. But first, uh, in here, I want you to know that I added the enabled border and the focused border. And then I added also the error border, which is will be useful in our case later on when we implement the auth screens, such as the sign up and sign in screens. And then we have the focused error border. So this one, when an error occur, when the user enter a, an invalid form, will have the errors and then when the user focus on the text that it has an error we will have this one like that and later on when I explain those screens I will change these values just to show it for you okay so if you don't understand clearly don't worry now in order to show the changes on the screen of course we need to remove 
the decoration from here. It's because I added this decoration here. So let's just remove it. And now save. And now I have the decoration which is coming from the theme data. Okay, 18 I think is too much. So I'll just keep it uh, maybe 12. Save. And like that, I think it is perfect. Now what I will add also is that I want it filled. I want to have a background color. So now when I put it filled, now we have this dark uh, color at the background. And then you can also choose the filled color. So you can choose, for example, red color if you want. Here it is. But of course, uh, I'll just remove it. I don't like it. And a good thing also to know is the content padding. So let's add the content padding and I'll put it to 50 just to show you clearly what will happen. So when I put it to 50, now I have the cursor in here. So I have 50 padding from all the sides. In my case, I will just keep it to 10. Okay, so that's it. Now let's come back to the search screen and for this text field, let's give it the other important things such as the icon to the left, which is the search icon and the X uh, icon from here in order to allow the user to clear his text. To do this, we need to define again the decoration. And now we don't need to define the borders, of course. In my case, I will define something called suffix. And actually, if I press, uh, I, if I show you the suggestions, you have the suffix and suffix icon, and uh, you can play around with it, uh, like changing the color, text, and so on. In my case, I will choose the suffix icon. I will give it icon, and I will choose the clear icon. Now save, and here it is, I have it here. Now format our code, and then what I'm gonna do is to wrap this widget by a gesture detector so that when the user press on it, we will need to do something. So let's add an empty function here on tab, and add an empty function and remove the const keyword from here and just put it here. Now what left also to add uh, the prefix icon. So let's say prefix icon and add the search icon. So we can choose icons dot search like that and save. And now I have it here. Okay, perfect. Now, I want to allow the user to clear this text when he press on this button. In order to do this, we need to access the text in this text field. And in order to do this, easily we can use something called controller. And this controller, it is an argument for the text field. If I hover on it, it is of type text editing controller. So in here, what we can do is to define it. But of course, in order to show the updates on the screen, we need to use a stateful widget. Or we need to use up wide state management just like what we did for the theme. But in our case, we need to just to manage our state locally because the changes will appear only on this screen, not like the theme, for example. So to convert it to a stateful widget, we can just do like that. And then in here, we define our text editing controller. I will name it search text controller. And I can define it directly like that. Or you can define it in the init state. And this is what I will do. And of course, we need to add the late. And now in here, you define the init state. And then you write your code like that. So I put the search text controller equal to the text editing controller. And like that, we initialize it. Now we need to use it. And a very important information is that we need to dispose it. Of course, always you need to dispose everything related to controllers. So you define the dispose method. And then you call the third search controller like that. And then you call dispose. And now, of course, you are asking yourself why we need to dispose it. And why I said it is very important. Of course, it is very important because when we go to another screen, some variables will stay in the memory of the phone and lead to memory leaks. And you don't want this to happen or slow your application. So this is why we need to ensure that to dispose all such variables 
like that. Okay, so when the user navigate to another screen, we make sure that the variables like the controllers are being disposed correctly. Make sure to do it always for all the controllers. This is very important for the performance of your application. Okay, this is good. Now we have the search text controller. Now I want when the user press on this icon to remove the text. First, let's add the color. I will use the red color. And then, now when I save it, I got an error. Okay, perfect. I got an error first because I converted to a stateful widget and second because I used late variable here and it didn't uh, get initialized good because we were already inside of this screen. So this end state didn't get called again. So let's restart it again and now it should work. Here it is, it is, uh, it is working actually. And what we can do actually to go to the root screen and then in here I'll change this value to one so that when I restart it, the search screen will be the main screen. Okay, now let's go to the search screen. And then here we need to call set state inside of this function. And then we call our controller. Then we call clear, just like that. Now save, write something, press on the X, and here it is. We removed it. Now, a good thing to do is that when the user remove it, also unfocus on the text. So we can add this line of code here or above. Save. Here it is. Okay. Now, before that, I end this tutorial. I want to show you some function or some useful function. So, so when the user press on this function, I want to do something. What I will do is actually to access the text of this text field. Okay. So in order to do this, the text field, it has some functions. So when you press, uh, you type on, here it is, you have many things. In our case, the on submitted is the one that I showed you. And in here, it takes a string, so you can name it whatever you want and name it value. What you can do is to log the value, for example. So I'll just type it like that. Of course, value in here. And what I will do also is to also log the value of the controller text. And to do this, we need to call the controller name. So let's say search text controller dot text like that. And now we should get the same value for both. Now save, try to type something, press on this submitted button. And here it is, you have it like that. So you have two options in order to get the values. But this is a good one because you can access it everywhere. But for the value, you can just get it by using this function. Now, another thing also is the unchanged function. It takes also the value and then here you can log. So if I save it now, and when I write something, it will be printed here, okay? So whenever the user writes something, the unchanged function will be called, okay? So uh, I think I'm gonna end this tutorial here, and uh, in the next tutorial, we continue and we start implementing this grid view and the widget that is being shown in here. It is a really good practice if you try to build it by your own, so try to do it, and we implement it together in the next tutorial. Thank you for attending. I'll see you in the next one. Now let's continue our work and start implementing these widgets. To do that, we need to use a grid view. We can use a grid view dot builder, which is very similar to the list view dot builder and it takes the same arguments. But for me, I want to use a package which is uh, very responsive. And uh, as I mentioned, this application is only responsive in this portrait mode. Okay. So for that, I will use this package. It's uh, very good and the code is really, really good. So you can rely on it. And uh, 
here an example so you can use it directly and of course we need to install it to install it you just need to copy this one as usual go back to your code then go to the prospect.yaml file and we need to paste that here and now save and as usual cut the process and run your application again so i will run it again and what i'm gonna do is to copy this then come back to my code again And then let's um, let's import it here. And now below of this text field here, we can define the dynamic grid view. As you can see, it takes the builder, and the builder, as usual, it takes the context, then the index. We need to return something. So for now, let's just return a center and let's give it uh, text. And for this text, let's uh, use the index like that. For the item count, it is the item count. I will use 200. For the cross axis count, it is uh, how, many, how many items you want side by side. In our case, I just want two. Now save. Okay, restart it. And actually, we don't uh, need to use the sliver. We need to use the dynamic height grid view. Now save. And I got this error, which is we saw it before, actually. So this error is the same error when I showed you when we built the quantity bottom sheet. So this one, I showed you why we get this error. So we cannot just use a list view inside of a column. And the same thing for the grid view. So in our case, we can just wrap it by expanded widget, save, and the error will be gone, and we can see the changes here. For the cross axis count, if I put it to four, now we have it four items next to each others. But in my case, I want just two. Now we need to start implementing our the products widget. So for that, let's create a new folder and I will name it product or products widget. I'll just name it like that. And now let's uh, define the product uh, or product widget dot dart. And in here, define a stateful widget, then define the product widget like that. So instead of this placeholder, of course, we need the column. And the first child will be the image so let's define the image and uh, for that I will use the fancy shimmer image and uh, I forgot to mention something about the fancy shimmer image I like to use it because it cache the image so if an image uh, has been fetched before uh, it cache it so so that when it fetch it again it will be very fast and it won't consume too much uh, data okay and for the image URL, we need to get it from the cart widget because we define it here. But what we can do is actually I will cut it from here and define a new file for our application constants. So I'll name it here up uh, constants dot dart and let's create a class and let's name it up constants. And in here, let's define a static const string and I will name it image URL and now paste what I have. Now I can use it here. We can define the up constant. I have it here. Then we can copy this and we can directly use it here like that. Now let's give it the height and width for this one. For the height I will use uh, I will use actually 20% of the height and then for the width I will use the whole width so for that let's use the double dot infinity and for the height actually we need uh, to define the size for that I will just copy it from the empty bag widget now use the size dot height times 0 0.22 for example and we can test our application now so Let's go back to our application and let's use this widget. So let's go back to the search screen instead of this center. 
use our widget, import it, add the const keyword, and restart. And now here it is, we can view our images. Okay, now what we can do is to add the size box here, just to add some uh, padding. Also, in the top here, before the offset text field, we can add padding also. Okay, now if you want to add some padding between these images, what you can do is to wrap this widget by some padding, or you can add the main axis spacing, put it to 12 for horizontal padding, and the cross axis spacing for vertical padding, you can do it like that. But for now, I'll just comment it for you and keep it. Then let's go to the products widget and let's wrap this column by some padding and save. So I have it like that. If you feel that it is big, you can use three, for example, and keep it like that. Now let's make uh, this image rounded. I showed you how by wrapping it by the clip rect widget. And now let's define the border radius circular. Let's give it 12 save. And now I have it like that. Now let's hit check. So I have this widget here. As I said, this widget, it won't, uh, I mean, the rating, it won't be covered in this course. It will be a separated course as an expert course or premium course. Then um, now we need to implement uh, these widgets. So we have this title here. Then we have the this button, icon button. And then we have the price and then to add to cart. Let's come back to our widget and start implementing this. So below of this clip rect, let's define a row, give it the children, and in here, let's give it the title text widget. And now I will give it the title times 10, of course, like that. Now save. And it is like that, but I got an error. Okay, first let's add some spacing. And save okay now let's add the icon button for the higher for the heart so for the wish list and in here we can use the icon Lee light dot heart like that and save of course it won't appear but we have it so now let's fix the error this overflow error. In order to fix it, we can simply wrap this widget by flexible widget or expanded widget. Save. And now I have it like that, but only few text appear, but I want it to take the most of the width. And in order to do this, we can give it flex here and put it to five, just like that, for example. And if nothing changed, what we can do also is to wrap this icon button by also flexible widget save and now as you can see we have it bigger in here perfect so now let's add the widget for the price and to add to cart so in here we will use the subtitle text widget and uh, actually we can remove the flexible widgets but i'll just keep it i'll keep it for one uh, to one here because uh, the price of course will be small for example let's give it any price then remove the timestamp add the const keyword here and then for the icon button in here we need to use the bag uh, or we can use the icons dot add to shopping uh, cart outlined or rounded for example now save and here it is I have it like that let's add the color for this one I will use the blue color and we can use the font weight and put it to maybe 600 to be I think a good idea yeah and we can add the main axis alignment here. So main axis alignment and put it to space between. Like that. 
And if you want to make the Add to Cart button like this one, or like this one, there is many ways in order to do it. I'll show you one approach. I'll cut this widget, then remove the icon button, and in here define equal so that we can press on the icon and paste the icon code and then now save nothing has changed of course so let's wrap it by material widget and now let's give it color and I will give it maybe color of light blue save and now I have it like that I'll just add the const keyword to get rid of these annoying lines okay so I have it like that of course it doesn't look great what we can do is to wrap this icon by padding like that now it looks better if the padding is big you can use six and what you can do also to make it smoother for the user is to add some rounded corners and of course we can do this simply by adding the border radius here so let's say border radius dot circular and give it value of 12 for example like that and now remove the const from here and add it here like that and save and now as you can see we have it Round it. Now, one more thing I want you to not set. I'll add the splash color for this one, and I will use the red color just to show it clearer for you. Now, if I press here, nothing is happening. Okay, let's add the on tab function so that this equal is uh, will be pressable, so that I can press on it press now and now I have this splash color and as you can see when I press too much this splash color doesn't match the border radius and this can be fixed by adding the border radius also for the inkwell so now if I press on it it will match the border radius okay so now we can just add some spacing between the widgets here we can add 6 for example and at the end we can also add some padding like that and uh, also in here we can add sized box at the end or we can just wrap it by some padding and we can use padding of 1 or 2 like that so I'll keep, uh, I'll keep that choice for you in order to change the design of the application. Okay, and for the padding, I'll keep it zero in here. And what I will do is to change it from here. Maybe we can use 12 by 12. Okay. And uh, before that I end this tutorial, let's go back to the product widget and let's wrap this column by material just to show the splash color or you can use a gesture detector directly and then let's add the add the on top function and in here i will add the log print and say in here to do add the navigate to the product screen or product details screen like that now save and now when I press on it I will be able to see this one so later on of course we need to navigate to the product details screen so this is why I wrapped it directly by a gesture detector and uh, I just noticed that this one for example when I press on it it's not uh, being centered and this is can be fixed by changing the flexible value and also what we can do is to give here the max lines let's put it to for example 2 save now I have it uh, 2 and for the flexible here we can use 2 also for the the icon now I have it like that and maybe what we can do for this text is use the font size maybe less use the try 20 I think it was the default so 
try 18 and now yeah it looks uh, it looks way more better so yeah feel free to play around with the design it would be a really good idea for you now i just wrapped uh, this uh, price and this widget by some padding so play around with the code try to change it as much as you can and for the next lectures reuse my code again in order to be able to continue with me okay so that's it for this tutorial i hope that you like it i'll see you in the next one in this tutorial i just want to make a few things clear when the user types something and then press on this icon here we remove the text as you remember and here the function to do this but in fact we don't really need set state in order to clear our text because when we call the controller then dot clear the ui would be rebuilded automatically without calling set state so this is useless we don't need to call it okay so this is just with this case when we call dot clear because the flutter team already um, made it for us but now you might be wondering why i told you that we need to use stateful widget if we don't use set state okay so as you remember we call this dispose method and this is as i said it's very important to keep it in mind of course you can make the text field as a dynamic widget or a custom widget as i showed you but it will be too much work so you can just keep the code like that it is totally okay and as you can see we have the constants keywords before of everything that it won't be rebuilded okay so this is very good for the performance now one more thing before that i end this tutorial is that in the product widget we used this icon and this icon or the uh, or any icon for example it takes an argument that's named size so this size by default is 24 so you can use another value if you want to make it a bit smaller for example so i use 20 now and it looks smaller and maybe a bit uh, cooler so uh, feel free to to change it as what you want okay so i wanted to show you this in this tutorial and i hope that it's clear enough for you thank you see you on the next one in this tutorial let's implement this carousel widget in order to be able to implement it we need to add a new package and this package uh, the name of this package actually is card swiper and you will find it here of course it's under MIT license and that is Dart 3 compatible so you can of course use it then in the readme you have a lot of examples as you can see when I scroll a lot of examples you can use and you also have the code okay to install it you can install it uh, by copying this one or as usual you go to the installing tab then you copy this one and add it to, uh, to the pubspec to tml file and then cut the process and run your application again in my case i already did that so that the package is now currently in the pubspec to tml file what i'm gonna do actually for now is to copy this code and then edit on it now let's go back to our code and then as i said we have the, and the pub spec I added this package here then I cut the process and run our application again okay so now let's go to the home screen and then in here what I did actually is to remove our previous widgets which is was here we won't use it anymore and then I added in the app bar our our app bar which is we did it here already okay so now we can proceed and define our swiper widget in here try to import it remove this const from here now remove this and let's try to restart our application and let's see what will happen so now i have this error this error you saw it before when we try to put a list inside of this column what we can do simply to fix this error is to wrap it by a size box and give it finite height so to give it finite height we can give it the height then get the size i already also defined the size up in here so we can use it so i will use uh, maybe 20 percent of the height or 25 percent let's say and then if i save or try to restart just to get rid of the error 
now it should work here it is now it is working as you can see okay um actually when i restarted now i have the search screen as the main screen but to change this let's go to the root screen and put this one to zero and now if i restart it again our our home screen would be the main screen okay so here it is when i restarted our home screen now is the main screen okay so uh, i have these uh, controllers here but i don't like it i don't want it so we remove the control and now if i save we don't have it anymore uh, these dots is coming from the pagination of course later on in the tutorial we will edit it a bit and then for the item count we'll keep it like that but for the images we want to show our images so i got some images from the internet uh, with these images it is already around it so you don't have to wrap it by a clip rack but if you want uh, to wrap it by a clip rack to add more border radius of course you can of course you can do this so in order to be able to use these images let's go back to the home screen and what we can do is to find to define a list in here let's say list of type string and we can name it for example banners images and we put it equal to we can call the assets uh, images asset manager dot for example we have the banner one and then I have another image for the banner too okay like that but now we don't have to define it in here we can define it directly in the app constant it's better to organize our code so let's add a static keyword here so that we can be able to use it like that of course we need to import this class and now we can use it so let's go back to the home screen and instead of this image we can use our list so we access our list so app constants dot banners images and then we give it the index here and uh, actually if we change the name will be better to banners images okay so i changed it like that now in here we have it image dot asset we're not uh, bring in these images from the internet and for the item count we need to use this list length okay so let's call dot length to it and now restart the application and let's see try to restart it again okay it seems that i have dart uh, html it's because of this so let's go to the app constant yeah here I remove this line and now if I start it, it should work. Be careful How about this. Okay, so now I have it uh, like that. And in here I have these two dots. If the image is selected, it will show the blue color. So if you want to change this color, it's easy. You can go again to the home screen and you can do it from here. So in here it takes a builder and the alignment. If you want uh, to put it on the top, you can use another alignment. Just you call it the alignment and you have multiple options okay if i put it to the center it will be in the center as you can see here okay um what i'm gonna do is actually to comment this line for you so if you want to change it later but now we need to give it the builder and for the builder it takes the dot swiper pagination builder and then you can give it the active color um i can put it to red for example now if i save instead of blue i have it red now and you can give also the color which is the if it's not selected it will show up so i can choose white for example okay let's add the const keyword here like that and let's format our code and uh, maybe before that i end this tutorial we can uh, wrap this column by padding like that now maybe it look better i'll put it on dark mode yeah now it is like that and we also can uh, add size box we can add size box here give it height for example of uh, 15 just to add some padding at the top like that and one more last thing is that if you want to make it uh, rounded or more rounded as usual we wrap it by clip rect widget like that and then we give it the border radius and for the border radius you can give it circular 
and you can choose 50 for example just to show it for you so you can make it like that for example i will just comment it so if you want to change this value you can change it by yourself okay so this is for this tutorial and the next tutorial will implement this widget which is very similar to what we did to this widget in here okay you have all the widgets already you just need to put it uh, uh, aside so just try to to implement at least this widget and then i'll show you how can we do this okay so that's it for this tutorial i'll see you in the next one in this tutorial let's start implementing these widgets I hope that you try to implement it by yourself first so we can proceed together now. Okay. So for that let's create a new file in the products and I will name it latest arrival.dart. Then create a stateless widget and we can name it latest arrival product widget. Okay? Okay, uh, to get started let's understand what's in here. So we have this image and beside to it, so in a row we have it with this title, which is in a column with these other widgets. Let's get started. Initialize a row, give it the children. The first child, we have it already define it in the products widget, which is the image or fancy shimmer image. Okay, so I'll copy this, go back to the latest arrival, and here paste it. Of course, we will need the size and import the required packages. So for the size, we can also get it from here and paste it here like that. And now, of course, this size, it would be better if we change it. For me, I will use size um, and height the same. So I'll use the size dot width and give it 28 of the screen for the height and width. Okay, and then Let's start adding these widgets. So this title here and so on. In order to do this, in here let's add some spacing. Maybe give it width of 5. And then let's define a text. I'll say in here title maybe times um, 5. Let's give it the max lines and put it to 2. And then let's give it the overflow. So overflow. And we give it the text overflow dot ellipses. Of course, you can use our uh, custom widgets for the subtitle or title text widget. Okay. Now, this text is in a column with the other widgets. So, we can put it directly in a column. And to avoid overflow errors, we can also wrap it by flexible uh, widgets. So, the rows or... Uh, widgets that are inside of this row let's wrap it by a flexible widget and even for the column like that okay now inside of this column let's also define the other icon buttons so we have icon button for the heart so also we can get it actually from here so we define this icon button so copy and then come back and we can paste it here and once more here for the cart so let's say add shopping cart for example and then for this one we need to import this package so import it like that and now what left is that this price this price also we can get it from here so this one and then let's go back and uh, inside of this column also we need to put it here to not forget these two icon buttons are found in a row so let's define a row and put it like that okay and let's actually wrap this widget by a fit box so that if it is too big we make sure that it will fit okay now our widget is ready to be used in the home screen so for that I'll go back here and then in the home screen below of the size box let's add the size box here also to give it uh, for example some spacing 
and then let's define a title text widget and then in here let's say latest arrival let's add also in here let's add also size box like that now save let's see we have it here in order to move it to the left let's add the cross axis alignment for this column and put it also to the start okay we have it like that now now we are ready to use our widget so and we want this list to be scrollable like that so it's kind of different than this one so here it is scrolling horizontally so let's start doing this of course when defining a list view dot builder for example inside of a column it will make the error that I always tell you about so in here let's return our widget which is the latest arrival widget and in here let's give it the context and let's give it the index like that and for the item count we can give it for example 10 and one more last thing is that I wanted to scroll horizontally so we add the scroll direction and we put it to access dot horizontal and what we need to do also is to wrap it by a sized box and give it a defined height to avoid the error and for the height I will give it maybe 20% of the height just like that now let's uh, go back to our application and let's see how it will look okay so I got this error and this error is actually because we have this widget inside of a list view dot builder which is scrolling horizontally and this widget it doesn't have a defined width so we need to make sure that we define a finite width and in order to do this we can wrap our row by by a sized box okay so let's define it by a size uh, let's wrap it by a sized box and give it a finite width so like that in my case i gave it around 50 percent of the width let's restart the application and let's see okay perfect so i have it like that first let's add the main access alignment or just cross axis alignment for the row and put it to the start okay so now i have the image so it's at the start and uh, what we need to do actually is maybe to wrap this row by a fitted box to make sure that it will fit save and now yeah here it is it is working just fine what you can do also is to add some size box here or some padding let's say so let's add it here and let's add uh, this one only for the height and then what you can do also is to wrap uh, this one by some padding like that okay of course if you want to change the background color you can by wrapping this row also or this size uh, sized box by a material widget for example or a container so material let's give it color so colors dot red let's say and now as you can see i have a, the background color for it but i don't think it's necessary so i will just remove this widget and uh, what i want to do actually is to wrap it by a gesture detector and for the gesture detector actually we can just get it from here like this one okay from the products widget and paste it here of course we need to import the dart developer save and now if i press on it here it is the print appeared in the console okay so let's do one more last test about uh, this one so let's add uh, more and yeah here it is we, we don't have an overflow error and for the title let's make it uh, times 15 let's say and also it doesn't make overflow error maximum two lines and here we have these three dots okay so uh, for the image if the width you feel that it is uh, small for example you can reduce this one put it to 24 and this one put it to 32 and now you have it like that okay so if you want to change something just do what suits you the best uh, that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will 
implement the categories widget as usual try to implement it by yourself and then we will implement it together later in the next tutorial thank you i'll see you on the next one in this tutorial let's implement these categories widgets so in order to do this there is actually many ways in order to put it uh, like that you can use grid view and there is many types of grid view okay and we already used one in the search screen so you can also use it let's get started now for that let's create a new file and let's name it category rounded widget dot dart and then let's create a stateless widget here and let's name it category rounded widget for that i continue in here we have this image as you can see then we have the name of the category in here okay so for that we need to define a column then the first child will be an image dot asset like that and let's directly make it a custom widget so for that let's define a final string and let's give it the image and let's give it the name let's add uh, these values to the constructor and then now we need to give the name here let's give it height and width of 50 and width of 50 and of course here i'm having this error because of course we need to give it for the children like that and then let's add the uh, spacing so size box here and then after that let's add the subtitle text widget and then we can do some decoration for it so for the label let's give it the name and then for the font size let's give it 14 and after that let's give it the font weight and give it font weight dot bold now this widget is ready to be used to use it we need to use it in the home screen here below of this of this widget so below of the latest arrival to do this what i'm gonna do first is to copy these widgets and paste it here and now instead of this text we need to use the categories save now i have it here maybe remove this sized box from here and now save now i have it like that so in order to use it let's define a grid view so let's say grid view and we can use dot count you can use dot uh, builder or any of the other methods in my case i will use dot count and here you have the cross axis count how many items you want uh, to put uh, next to each others i'll put uh, four for example and if you want to make it responsive you need to do a check about the size of the screen and then uh, give it different values okay now let's uh, continue what we need to give is actually the children so for the children we need to give it our widgets so in here we need to use the category rounded uh, widget and let's use for example the mobiles here and let's say for the name let's use fonts let's add it uh, three more times let's save or of course let's restart the application and let's see as usual i got this error of course we need to add the shink wrap and put it to true and then let's add the physics and put it to never scroll physics like that and to not forget let's wrap the column by single child scroll view so that it will be scrollable if it won't fit on the screen okay so our widget appeared like that if i copy again and paste it more and save okay i have it like that and now it is scrollable now it is working which is good but this code is not readable at all we need to find a way in order to to reduce our code and make it more dynamic let's say in order to do this let's create a model class this model class will help us to organize our code more and more and later on in the state management we will use it extensively so for that let's define a new folder and let's name it models and inside of this model is this let's define a new class and or a new file and let's name it let's name it categories underscore model dot dart like that in here let's define a class and let's say categories model like that and let's define a final string id name image let's define the constructor and let's name it a named constructor just to make it clearer 
like that and format our code like that now we need to use this class so what we can do actually is to use it to create a list and then this list use it as a child for the children argument in here so we remove this one and what we can do is actually list to generate and here we need to give it the length later on we'll give it the length of our list and in here we need to return a widget and in our case we will return the category rounded widget but these parameters we need to get it from somewhere so to do this let's define a list so this list you will see how it will be so in the up constants let's define a static and this list it will be of type category so categories model like that and then you can name it for example categories list like that okay so now before that i continue this list it can be used directly to access this length so we call the app constants dot our list dot length like that and then for the image and name we will also call this list we need to use the index correct index and then if i type dot i will have access to the id image and name which is coming from the category model from here okay if it's not clear for you until now just continue with me and then i will re-explain what we did so everything we did i will explain it now let's continue and now in here for the image we will use the image then for the name we will use the name just like that now restart the application let's see nothing appeared of course because our list is empty till now so how can we define a list of this type if I type here categories model and then we can give it the ID and the name and the image so for the ID we can call the assets manager and you can give it any string as what you want so we can give it mobiles for the name let's use for example fonts and for the image we can use this mobile image let's paste it multiple times and of course here we need to add this comma so paste it multiple times and uh, for example if you want to change this icon we can use for example electronic for this icon we can use cosmetics and if you want to change the name you can directly change it like that now i will restart it and we will view something here okay so when i restart it now we can see it here we have at the end cosmetics and electronics which is coming from here now what i will do is to repeat what we did okay so let's go step by step we have the category rounded widget we defined in here this column which is we have this image and then we have this subtitle text widget this is very simple now let's go to the home screen and the home screen what we did actually is to define as this grid view then it takes an argument called children and for the children we can generate a list then it takes the length in here and then we need to return our widget now to return our widget it takes these two arguments and these two arguments we need to get it from a list and to organize our code very well we defined a model class this model class it has an id and it has name and images so we define the constructor like that so that we can use it or we will be able to use it later on so to use it we defined a new list inside of the app constants and this list of course is static so that we can call the class name then dot this list and to specify the type for this list we put it categories model and to define this list we need to define this type so we define categories model and then we need to give it the required arguments which are the id name and images okay then we are using this list inside of the home screen in order to generate our list and give it the correct length 
the correct image and name. Okay, so I think now it is very clear for you. Now what I will do is actually to add my list, the correct list for the categories, and then we test that one more last time. So I'll replace my list, the correct list, instead of this one. Now I added uh, my list here. So I added uh, all the required uh, or all the categories that we have. And later on in the expert course, not in this uh, normal course. So in the expert course, I will cover how to upload a category, then fetch it from the back end and display it for the user so that the admin will be able to upload a category. Okay, so now I added everything here and uh, now we can restart our, uh, our application and let's see. Once I restart it, now I have it like that. Okay, now let's do some final touch on the home screen so that in the latest arrival, what we can do is actually to add uh, some spacing between the titles and the other widgets here. Now save, I will, it will look a bit uh, better. And maybe five is not enough here, so we can maybe do it eight. Now it is uh, like that. And uh, for this carousel or swiper, it's not, uh, it's not uh, automatically swiping by itself. So in order to fix this in the home screen, we can go to the swiper widget and then the autoplay, you can put it to true. And if this is uh, annoying you that uh, we write the whole code in here, you can also create a custom widget and you can do it separately and then we can use it in here directly. So you can directly, if you press like that, you can extract it to a local variable or you can just uh, cut it and create a stateless widget in order to use it. Okay, so first let's restart it and let's see if it will work. Yeah, now it is moving by itself. Okay, so uh, that's it for this tutorial. See you on the next one.